What's happening, gang? This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Show number 136, is that right? Is that what we're up to? 134. And if you add the bonus shows we've done since we started, this is about the 140th show. So there you go. What do you know? It's the 140th show. What's up around the world? Yo, what's up, Ryan? Toronto's 35 degrees today? Damn, bro. Come on now. What's up, Joe Frank? Hope you're well, bro. Thanks, thanks for what's up, Maddie. Yeah, it, yo, it is Sunday fun day. It is Sunday shout out day. Yo, let's talk about music. Let's talk about community and culture. You know, enough with all that other headache nonsense. What's happening in Scotland, Gregor? How's the weather in Scotland, bro? <laughs> David, get the funk out of my face. What's happening? What's up, Drew and crew? Missed the last few episodes hanging with the granddaughter. Bro, you're here now. That's what counts, man, and, and, and we appreciate it. What's happening in Belgium? My kind, of, my, <laughs> my kind of country. There you go. Sunny. I didn't know the sun shines over there like that, huh? London's flooded. London's flooded. <laughs> Sharky, greetings from Phuket. Is that how you pronounce that? Phuket. Hey, Phuket, I'm out of here. Phuket. Brother, hey, John. Good to see you, buddy. Hope you're well. You know, there you go. Heat index here is 106. That lawn ain't getting mowed. For, yeah, fuck that. Hey, mow the lawn. Was that a dice? Hey, baby, bend over, I'll mow the lawn. Remember that? Um, what else? Okay. Hey, let's talk about for a second uh, the next four shows. Here we go. What do you know? These are the next four shows on the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Coming up this Wednesday, Dave Scott, Sch Dave Scott Schwartzman from Adrenaline OD. This is going to be a cool show. He's got an incredible memory, and he was around the early New York hardcore scene. Like this dude... Uh, uh, Adrenaline OD played, you know, early on, 80, 81, 82, and he's got a great memory. So this will be, this one will be deep, deep in New York hardcore uh, history and folklore. Uh, then we got a week from today, we got Joe Hardcore representing Philly. We'll talk about This Is Hardcore. We'll talk about, um, you know, him in, uh, singing for Punishment and Shattered Realm and, and all that. Uh, then... We got EK coming on to talk a little war zone, a little sick of it all. And then two weeks from today, Scott Ian from Anthrax is coming on show. Joey, Joey Shithead had to reschedule. We did another show instead. Joey Shithead, he's a politician. Uh, he had to. Rich Zoller, what's up? Yo, got to shout out Rich Zoller. Lost all his photos from the A7. Um, uh, Rampage Fest. Lost the whole car to stuff, man. So that that hurts. We all know that stings when a photographer loses all his photos. But Rich Zoller, you're the man, you know. Um, so there you go. Yeah, Steve. AOD Legends. New York Hardcore Legends, absolutely. Uh, Rich Zoller, how's your knee, bro? Rich Zola got Rich Zola got taken out by what do you call what do you call that again? Crowd crunchers, what is that called? Yeah, right. We'll have to have another. What is that called? Crowd. All right. Let, you know what? Let's bring on the 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 hardcore shutterbug and ask him. What is I, that called? I think crowd it's called a, a crowd killer. Yeah, a crowd killer. Crowd yeah. killing. Okay. Yeah, that All was right. rough, man. That, oof, the, you get hit in the knee like that. Oh. But uh, big shout yeah, out to Rich Zoller. What a what a monster photographer he is. Gotta say, I I'll say this about Rich Zoller as a photographer. That dude gets right in the line of fire. He's standing there oh, yeah. with a camera, right in the line of fire. Oh yeah, well he's he's he don't he's not afraid to get right in the mix. You know, there he is. Let me tell you, doing better, gonna be a dit. Uh, not sure what that means. Yep, yeah, it sucks, man. Tried to take out our boy. I know. We, well, we, they took out Tim Daly the week before. No, Tim Daly <laughs> took himself out, bro. He wiped out on his bike, didn't he? I, I think it's a plot. It's a plot to take out all the photographers. 
Speaking of which, where is photo of the day? You did Good send question. me photo of the day. I right? did. Yeah. While he's looking, I want to say thank you to everybody for all the birthday wishes. That was really awesome yesterday. Thank you so much. So that really made my day. Happy birthday, bro. I was I was actually off the grid yesterday. Ah. Oh, wait. Yeah. Wait. I, should I tell the story about what happened? Oh, you definitely <laughs> got to tell the story. You get a load, tell get the story. a load of this for, for people out there that love the show and have been watching a lot of the show. So we go out to Sag Harbor, right? Because uh, Zum invites us out to Sag Harbor. We go out to Sag Harbor, uh, me and my gal, right? And we park in the, in the town there, Sag Harbor, and I come around the corner, and who do I literally bump into? Billy Joel. I'm like, wow, there he is, Billy Joel. Now he was by himself. He was eating at an outside at an outside restaurant, and I wasn't like, "Hey, bro, let me get a picture." <laughs> hey, by the way, I shit all over you on my show. Can I get a picture with you? <laughs> but yo, face to face with Billy Joel, <laughs> it was like. And then the you're the one person that I texted. Right? <laughs> I know. It was like yeah. the war of the gargantuous. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't talk to, you know, what am I going to do? The poor bastard's eating his fucking meal. I'm going to be, hey, bro, what's up? Can I get a picture? Hey, you know, like, I, 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 you know. I'm your biggest non-fan. Yeah, of course you love it. Yo, Billy Joe lives within walking distance of the town because I was told by a reliable source that dude got in so much trouble for drinking and driving. I think he wrapped his car around a tree at some point that – the judge, one of the stipulations was they made him buy a house within walking distance so the freaking guy won't get behind the wheel. <laughs> you know? Sing me a song, <laughs> I'm the piano man. Yes, That's Billy Joel used to have a hard rock band called Attila. I know. Yes, this is true. Long Island's Bruce Spring. All right, let's not get on a Billy Joel <laughs> tangent. Let, let, let me find... Let me find the photo of the day, man. You know? <laughs> la, la, la. What happened to that stuff? I don't know. Oh, here it is. There it is. Hey, there it is. Do I know you? Oh, there. Hey, there you are. Do I know you? No, but there you are. <laughs> Remember that? All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, boy. Here we go with this one. This should be interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you asked for it, you got it. Hardcore Shutterbug photo of the day. Boom. Here we go. What have we here? Oh, boy. I know who this is. A controversial figure. All right. Let him, let, let's let it fly. Photo of the day. You know what? Right off the bat, I saw that coming. Is it Richard Gere? Right <laughs> off the bat. I mean, that's of course. I mean, that that's a that's a given. Is it Duff? Is it Duff from? Is it Duff from Guns N' Roses? Is it Courtney Love? Wrong answers only, please. <laughs> is it Courtney? Is it Mickey Rourke? That's good. That's good. Rap bones. Is it Rick Ashley? Is it Les Claypool? Is it Paul Weller? That's a good one, Happy Jack. Ah, There's a little Paul, Paul Weller. Weller in that. The mod father. Is it stung? That's good, Joe. <laughs> Is it stung? <laughs> I like that. Here's, an, here's another one. All right. Little kooky. A little kooky. Here we go. There you go. Uh, Is, there it you Is it the Goo Goo Dolls? Is it HR? Is it David Spade? Is it is it Warren Zevon? Warren Zevon's dead, bro. Maybe they dug him up and propped him up on like like uh, Blackie Lawless. Good one. Oh Jesus! Is it Billy Joel? <laughs> oh shit! Is it Hanson? No, nobody. No, is it how Billy Joel looks now after wrapping his car around a tree? <laughs> is it sticks? Wait. 
Where's I saw Whitney had a comment. She's always good. Hold on. Where where is that? Come on. All right. Let me see. Is it Iggy? Is it Lee Ving? Is it Chuck Norris? <laughs> is it Chris Christopherson? Is it the next president? Yeah. Oof. Let's, I don't know about that. I don't know about that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dudes, you know. All right, tell us about – all right, right answers only, please. Let's see. Let's get some right answers in there. Yeah. Is it that guy from that movie who was in the band with the other dude that had the hit song in the 80s? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Shit. That's fucking funny, man. That's funny. Yo, shouting out Sean Brennan. What's up, brother? Love you, man. Sean. RW. All right, right answers only, please. Is it? Roger Waters. Is it Roger Waters? Roger Waters? Roger Waters. All right, there's the Whitney comment. Lloyd Bridges looks like I picked the wrong week to stop, stop sniffing glue. All right. Well, is it Roger Waters? It is Roger Waters, yes. This is Roger Waters' solo. Um, I never got to see Pink Floyd, like the true Pink Floyd with the four of them. Bro, uh, do, you want, do you want to know when the last time – the true Pink Floyd played. I live, even know this. Live was, well, other than that, do you know when the last time the true Pink Floyd played Long Island? Anybody? Anybody? I, I think I do. You talking about with the original four? The original four. When was the last time Pink Floyd played Long Island? It's at Nassau Coliseum for the wall. Very good. 1980. Yeah. Yep. And, and, you know, they only did... East and West Coast, they only did California and the Nassau Coliseum. And today. they did London too. For uh, I'm talking about for America, but uh, yeah. I um, I would uh, that's to see them on the wall tour. I would pretty much uh, that's that's an absolute bucket list show for me. I mean, I uh, I grew up at the wall, and like I think that was just like one of the greatest records ever made. Um, well, I, I'll say this about this guy: people have asked me through the years, you know with all the interviews I've done between all the films and the show. And, you know, there's a couple of people that, that are on my bucket list and he is one of them. If I could interview anybody, man, uh, you know, Roger Waters, Paul McCartney, Bob Dylan, you know, I've already, you know, I've already got interviewed, you know, John Lydon. Yeah. You know, a, a couple of big ones, but those, he's, he's, He's a he's a monster, man. I oh, mean, he's an absolute absolute beast, and like, yep. And he's still like, I you know. In fact, a funny a funny thing about Roger Waters, um, uh, a couple of years back, my my brother works for the Yankees. My brother's a scoreboard operator for the New York Yankees. Uh huh. And I was out. Uh, I was out seeing a show one night, and I was supposed to go to a show the next night. And my brother said, "Come to Yankee Stadium." Roger Waters is doing the wall. So I blew off the show that I was going to go to, to go see Roger Waters. Uh, and it turned out that that was the night of the whole stabbing incident at Webster Hall with Harley and everything that I would have been at. But instead, where, I was, the, see where was the show? Yankee Stadium when Roger Waters did the wall. I remember that. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I didn't see that one. But I, 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 the last time I spent, the last time I spent, I don't want to say big money. On a show, I laid down, I think, a hundred bucks to see the wall. Oh, to see that it, it's, I know you know what? Worth it. Worth it for sure. This particular picture was taken uh at a thing called Live Earth in and it was seven seven oh seven. It was July seventh, two thousand seven. And it was a whole list of bands, including the reunited police. So Sting was there. Um yep. You know, like uh, Smashing Pumpkins and Bon Jovi and John Mayer and all these people, Kanye I, I, West. I have a and, question. I have a yes. question for everybody out there. Is Roger Waters anti-Semitic? He's definitely got some serious opinions. No, no, let's, not to get politics into it, right. but is Roger Waters anti-Semitic? should be interesting to see what people have to say. The, uh, you know? You know, you know, it was actually a, a, a an interesting memory about shooting this show was uh, I was in the photo pit 
and I kept getting nudged by someone who was like kind of eking for position. And it was Cameron Diaz <laughs> was, was in the front and she's a huge Roger Waters fan. And they let I'm a, her, I'm a big Roger Waters fan. They man. let her it's in like, the photo pit with us. So she was in there jumping up and down, having a great time. And uh, his band is always like letter perfect. I mean, his musician. Yo, come on. Is, this is the yeah. dude that wrote The Wall. Oh, how, about, how about Pink Floyd Animals? What you know about oh, that? Oh, God. I was listening no. to that yesterday in the car, actually. That's my favorite Pink Floyd records, Animals. You, you know, it's, you know, you know? It's, you know, it's a cool thing. Uh, do, are you a, a Pete Townsend? Okay, here fan? you go. Here oh. you go. No, he's pro-Palestinian. He wants them treated better. Doesn't mean he hates Jews. Very good answer, guy. Very good answer. Uh, Roger Waters is is um, been accused of being anti-Semitic, but personally, I believe he, if anything, is anti-Israel government. Um, I don't. I don't think that anti. I, I don't think that Roger Waters is anti-Semitic. And just because you're anti-Israel uh, doesn't mean you're anti-Semitic. Yeah, God, you nailed it, bro. You, you, you nailed it. That said, I've seen him play and all he, you know, I saw it last time I saw him play, it was like, fuck this. And all, 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 mm. all, all, it was, the show was so political. I was oh, exhausted, yeah. bro. It was so political. I was exhausted, man. The whole last album was like an anti-Trump album. It was really, yeah. uh, yeah. you know, but he's so good. I mean, his music, it like, and during the pandemic, he did some pandemic videos where he did Mother and stuff like that. And it's just, the guy hasn't lost a step. I mean, he's What's up, Alago? Hey, Mike. How I wish you were here. You'll be here soon. <laughs> Hang in there. I sent you the link. Yeah, you know, um, the, the last thing I want to say about Waters is uh, a really cool thing. I read Pete Townsend's autobiography, and he said the only time he ever blew off a Who show, his own show, Early on, he blew off a Who show so that he could go see Pink Floyd's first show. There you go. So that's pretty with cool. Sid, with Sid Barrett. Yeah, exactly. All right. Hey, listen, let me get the show on the road. I'll talk to you in a bit. Absolutely. You're going to come back on and talk to our guest? I'll, I'll be back. I'll be back. All right. What's happening? This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, and we are sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, the Texas Silver Rush, Chain Reaction Records, and Skateboards, DTFM Vinyl Distro, Generation Records, and, 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 and Chacho's Tacos. Located in Corpus Christi, Texas, Chacho's Tacos opened the doors in 2001, home of the almighty Chacho's Taco. They cook up an incredible home-style Tex-Mex food, and this month they're celebrating their 20th anniversary. They've been supporting underground music since the beginning, and in their own words, we ain't stopping anytime soon. Touring bands at play, Corpus Christi, Texas. Swing by and get a home-cooked meal at Chacho's Tacos. We got you. The underground scene will never die. Please follow us on Facebook or on Instagram. DTFM Vinyl Distro is a record store that specializes in underground music, punk, ska, hardcore, metal, and more. Located in the heart of Fargo, North Dakota's Industrial District, shop in person or online at www.dtfm vinyl distro, where the motto is, death to false metal. That said, let's bring our guest on. Let me see. Everybody behaving themselves. No big drama. Yeah, listen. Listen. Not, you know, we don't do politics here, but the Roger Waters thing is interesting. Being anti-Israel is not being anti-Semitic. Palestinians are Semitic. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's crazy. Drew has become a very good show host. Wish he had a late night show. Don't worry, it's coming. <laughs> Don't worry, it's coming. That said, let's clear the deck. What the heck? Here we go. Don't you know? Today's guest is an American vocalist and songwriter hailing from Nyack in the Empire State of New York. He's known for his work with Exodus, Fragile Mortals, and his current project, Generation Kill. Please welcome, coming at us from Chandler. In the Valentine State of Arizona, please welcome our friend, Mr. Rob Dukes. Brother. What's up, man? How hey, why do they bud? call it why do they call it the Valentine State? I don't fucking know. I never that's the first time I've ever heard of that. You know, I looked it's it up. It's a hot fucking state. It's a fucking <laughs> it's hell on earth, is what it is. 
fucking it's, they, they yeah, literally fucking call it the here. Valentine's State because it was fucking it became a state on Valentine's Day. No shit. Well, the re- so the reason I moved here, so like eight months out of the year, it's fucking gorgeous. Like the weather is fucking amazing, right? But for four months, it's fucking brutal. But it's just hot enough to keep the douchebags in LA and they don't move here. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Because they can't handle the summer. They'd fucking die in the summer. They'd be like, ah, oh, fuck this. So, yeah, but it's a, that's a cool spot. I like it. I- I think the last time I saw you, never you get was used to the heat ever. Last time I saw you is when we all yeah. had uh, dinner together. Out there. Yeah, we had dinner out in Scottsdale. And uh, so, yeah, Scottsdale is like the, uh, it's like the fucking Walnut Creek or the, it's like, it's like the Hamptons. It's like, it's just the, the richest yeah. part of town. Everyone, they're all wearing those. It, you know what the new look is here, man, is the wearing the dress shoes with no socks and the little oh. skinny jeans. It's such an awful look. Yeah. Hey, Me, so yeah. let's, uh, let's get into it. I'm Vans, old school. <laughs> let's get into it a little bit. What, yeah. um, what, what's the latest? What was happening when the zombie apocalypse hit? You know, how, how was your last fucking 16 months, bro? Well, I got sick in March of last year. Uh, it was like at the very beginning. I, so it was like uh, like a bad flu, hard time breathing, loss of smell, all that shit. Uh, and then uh, and then I've been fine since. So I've been working a whole time because I work. So I work. Uh, I was I switched jobs in the in the pandemic. I was working at a V Dub shop called Doug's Bugs and Mesa, and uh, we did uh, Volkswagen restorations. I did all the restorations. It, it wasn't day to day stuff, but I did all the restoration stuff. And then. Um, I just, uh, it, it kind of came to a head and I, and I, I left and I went to, now I'm working at a spot where I'm doing uh, vintage uh, air-cooled Porsches, like old 911s, like early 60s 911s. So I switched jobs and I, I work alone. I work by myself. You know, um, I don't, uh, I'm not around so you're people. Not, so so. You're, not doing, you're not doing bugs anymore? Um, no, no, I'm doing Porsches now. Wow. So, but uh, I, I, you know, I still love the Volkswagen Beetle. You know, I still do a lot of off-road stuff. I did a lot of that stuff. I just, uh, I needed a change. I needed a, a new challenge. And I don't know anything about Porsches, so I'm kind of like going at it like a, it's like, uh, it's all new territory. I, I enjoy the challenge of it, so. The, you know, now that we're, we're sort of, now that we're sort of on it, I just want to, I just want to put up a couple of these bugs, these bugs that you worked on. These are fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. No, tell us about what, tell, what's up with this. Tell us about this. So that is called a shorty bus. So it's a it's a 23 window bus that they cut in half and weld it back together. And the uh, KG Customs over in Scott in Scottsdale did uh, that most of the work. I did a lot of the interior stuff, the outer trim, all the glass, the rubber, and the windows. I did a lot of the dash stuff and. Uh, uh, the electrical alarm system and the stereo and all that. I did like a lot of that stuff. I did like the finishing touches on it. It actually went to one of the biggest car shows in, uh, in America and won uh, best pride, best best vehicle. So it was kind of kind of cool. Uh, KG Customs and uh, did all that work. My friend Kevin over there, and uh, I mean, he's fucking awesome. Yeah. I mean, some of these are are absolutely absolutely beautiful, man. Like this one. Yeah. Yeah, that's a '64. That's a '64 lowered. I, I narrowed the beam. Uh, new motor, new trans, new brakes. Did all the interior, um, new steering wheel, dash, all components. He actually hot rods that. It's actually like a little badass little car. It's actually kind of quick. Uh, it's got a, a black Mamba shifter. Um, it's got. It's just you know. It's it's got the best of everything that you can get aftermarket and. Uh, some of the original stuff on the inside is really cool. He's got like an early, uh, a late '50s steering wheel in it. They call it a bat wing. It's it's cool as shit. And, um, Here, here's just, an interesting, here's an interesting yeah. question from Paulie. Like, did the purists go crazy because he cut that bus up? Is there a contingent of like purists that like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, a lot of people. Like my buddy has a a, a fucking badass Baja that's an oval. 
<laughs> I mean, it's an oval window, but it was cut up like before. So oval window cars are like the coveted car, but in the in the eighties they were worth like you know fifteen hundred bucks. So you, you could get them, <laughs> and people just chopped them up and made them into hot rods or lowered them or or chopped them because they didn't they didn't realize what what was going to happen like later in time. But of now course. we're like sixty years sixty years down the road, and the cars are worth so much fucking money. Um, so yeah, those are those are two Gias. Uh, the one's a '62. I uh, this the top one on the lift was a uh, pan off. So I took it down to bare metal, the pan, replaced everything, replaced all the rubber, and then lowered it, narrowed the beam, did all the uh, custom interior, did the dash over. Um, the bottom one was like a mid '70s, and I I just redid that whole car. They that we didn't paint it. Someone else painted it like ten years before. And then it just sat and rotted, and I changed oh. all the rubber and oh. all the, you know, all the rubber, all the glass, and did a bunch of a bunch of custom stuff to it. But um, is, you know, yeah. Is is that weather out there like that that desert weather? Is that kind to cars like older cars like this? Yeah, because there's no salt here. They don't. They don't. You know, there's no salt on the roads. So there's no rust. There's no seawater, and there's no salt in the air. So like. California cars and, and any, any anywhere it snows, cars are gonna rust because of the salt they put on the roads. And then sure. Arizona is like a. It was one of the reasons I moved here was because I I loved cars so much and I just wanted to, uh, you know, it was, there's no rust. I, I mean, I had a couple of Volkswagens back east, man, and they were just fucking nightmares to work on because everything was rotted to the core. So. You yeah. know, you'd have to replace it. Now, now cars do rust here. If they, if you know, water sits, if it rains and a car sits outside, it's gonna rot away because right. water just hates metal. So, yeah. um, so you know, you have those issues, but they're not nearly as much as on the west coast near the water, and then the, anywhere where it snows is gonna be bad. Um, our our so. boy, our boy Heggs asks, is the engine in the front of those? No, they're all in the rear. Those are all rear engine. Uh, I don't work on anything in the engine in the front. Everything I work on is a rear engine car. Wow. And let me, let's just, while we're doing this kind of cool tour, this what this one caught my eye in, in, in what you sent me. And uh, what's happening here? Hold on. Wait for it. There it is. That's my Corvette. That's, that's your Corvette. That's your that's Corvette. My that's my personal Corvette. I uh, <laughs> I uh, I bought that for I bought that. I got it real cheap. It's been sitting for uh, fifteen years, just rotting outside. So I bought it for not much, and I stripped out the interior. It had like this ugly blue interior. I made it all black. I put a black dash in it, black seats, black carpet, um, and then I. Uh, I put those cool. I I found the the they started repopping the fifty foot track N fifties. They're fifteen inches wide, twenty eight inches tall, and I found some old early seventies style uh, slot mags, and um, I redid the rear. I redid the trans. Uh, the, I did the top end on the motor because it only had fifty two thousand miles on it. T tops. I changed all the rubber and the and the and the so the water would stop getting in it, and then. Uh, and I drive the shit out of it in the winter. I don't drive it in the summer because uh, I pulled the AC out of it. And I'm, I I planned on putting a different motor in it. But I'm just going to drive this until the motor dies. And then I'll probably – my plan was to put a uh, like a 383 stroker motor with a with a blower. That's like Is that a plan. 72? It's a 76. So 76. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not very fast. It only has about 200 horsepower. It's, but it's fun to drive. It's cool. It's it just looked it's fun to drive, dude. I, I mean, uh, uh, you know, I, I like, uh, you know, just uh, I was never a Corvette guy till I till my buddy was painting one, and I went, I sat inside it, and he was in the middle <laughs> painting it. And I'm like, dude, I was driving a '69 Lincoln Continental at the time, and uh, I sat inside this car. He was painting. I'm like, dude, this is fucking badass. I sold the Continental and bought that vet like a week later, and just started restoring it and started. I've been collecting parts. I got like. Like I said, I changed it. It had this ugly blue door panels, ugly dash, and I changed it all, man. I just started making it all fucking like early '70s hot rod style. That's the that was the my goal was big time, big '50s. Raise it up, rake it, and just you know function over you know you know over over form doesn't matter in that sense. I just wanted it to be a cool go. looking car, like a hey, Hot Wheels car, you know. There you go. Hey, so let's uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, music. 
did you did you grow up in a musical household? How did music come into your life, and 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 how did you get how did you like personally get involved in in in, in the music game? So, my uncle Logan, who passed away uh, a few years ago, he um when I was a kid, uh, I I I I grew I lived was living with my grandparents, and uh, he was a he was a bluegrass musician, an excellent bluegrass musician. He had a band called Whiskey Before Breakfast. Which is one of those Love it. awesome band names, you know what I mean? Love it. And, uh, Love it. His, his wife was the his wife played stand up bass. He was a banjo player, and he played uh, uh, viola, and he played guitar, and he played, uh, you know, a lot of the string instruments. And he would they were bluegrass, and they were badass. He was also the music writer for the St. Petersburg Times in Florida. That's where he lived, and uh, he wrote the music column for the newspaper back when newspapers were a thing. And um, so he. When I was a kid, I had there's pictures of me at like five years old sitting in front of one of those old ass stereos listening to albums with big headphones on. And I'm like, I'm like five years old. That's just what I did. I listened to music constantly. And um, when I was about eight, he came over with a stack of records and he says, listen to these. Give me back what you don't like. And uh, so I gave him back the Grateful Dead and yes. <laughs> and uh, and I I kept uh, I kept uh, the Doors, Jimi <laughs> Hendrix, Black Sabbath, uh, Pink Floyd, uh, and then uh, and then you know so that sp spawned my my own taste of music. And then um, I used to mow lawns. I mowed my my lawn and my neighbor's lawn as a as a little kid. And the first time I got money, I went to a record store and I bought uh, Queen News of the World. That was my Love that. I bought that. Well. I bought that, and I bought uh, the Clash, the first the Clash album, and I took those home, and I I listened to those uh, for the next like I, I mean, I, I remember I remember taking the, one of the records to my friend's house, and his needle wouldn't play it because I had worn a groove in it with my own needle, and so it wouldn't work on his. So I just listened to them, and I listened to them. I, I would they would I had one of those record players that would just repeat. You know, it would it would get to the end of the record and it would just go back to the beginning. And I uh, that's just what I did. I listened to that. And uh, I, I wasn't I didn't want I wasn't it wasn't that I wasn't allowed to. I was discouraged from watching TV. And even though back then there was only like three channels anyway, because I'm old as fuck. And uh, I didn't I wasn't a TV. Guy. I read a lot of books. I, w I was forced to read. And then I I got my first guitar when I was like maybe like 14. Before that, I. There was a piano in the house. I always fucked around with it, and uh, you know, I just, I just loved music. And then I, I uh, moved to New York uh, when I was about eight, eight or nine. To Nyack? Um, no, no, I moved to Queens in Astoria. Oh, and there you go. Astoria, Astoria, Re or Astoria, Astoria represent. That's yeah, yeah. And uh, so I Pop lived there for about five. of music yeah. activity, Astoria, Queens. <laughs> It is. I live on Steinway, at Steinway Street. I live right near. <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, uh. but I, so my my stepfather uh, was a real was a cool guy. Uh, I didn't think he was cool then, but I think he's cool now. But he was. Um, he saw like he used to go to the Fillmore East and see like Hendrix for like three dollars. Oh, you know hell what I mean? Yeah. He said Joplin. He saw he saw everybody, dude. He almost got into a fist fight with Pete Townsend once. A story he told me when they were at the bar, he was ordering a beer. And Pete Townsend grabbed his beer and said, thanks. And he almost punched him in the face. And uh, so, uh, but he, he told me some great stuff. But he had a killer record collection. And he um, he turned me on to like Mike Bloomfield, uh, David Peel, uh, Frank Zappa. Like he there had all go. like a, he had, he had like a weird collection of music, which I, you know, so I picked up that too. But he also liked uh, like uh, the Temptations, and he liked uh, R and B music too. So there was that, and he and and you know he was a big Hendrix fan and the Beatles. He he was a Beatles guy, and my mom was a Stones. She loved the Stones, and my and my, he loved the Beatles. So I got both of all those records. Matter of fact, I my first Pink Floyd record was Dark Side of the Moon, which is still one of my favorites. But he. Um, but I, I wore that one out. I, 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 so I just had this awesome collection. And then, you know, I mean, I, metal came like metal came later from like, like a kid in my neighborhood. He bought like uh, a Judas Priest record. It was Sad Wings Destiny. 
And uh, that became one of my all-time favorites. Like, so my Desert 5, Stadwings is in my Desert 5 disc. If you, I had to live on an island with five albums. Uh, when I first heard Judas Priest, I was like, wow, this is different. Which, in turn, turned me on to, you know, uh, I remember my first time I ever heard Metallica. It wasn't even Metallica. It was a, a, a someone gave me a cassette tape of a garage band doing Hit the Lights. It wasn't even Metallica. It was just some kids doing a cover of Hit the Lights. And I was like, what is this? And then I went down that path and I started. But at the same time, I also listened to the Misfits and the Clash. And yeah, I wanted to, I, 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 that was and next. I wanted that. to ask you yeah. about did, did yeah. punk – did punk or hardcore, did that come into your universe at all early on? Yeah, it did. It did. It, see, you know you know how, like, back then, man, like, if you were a punk kid, you only listen to punk. And if you were yeah. a metalhead, you grew your hair. What are you, you man? What are right. you? And yeah. I, I I, did not conform to any of that. I, I actually listened. Yeah. I was still listening to Queen and Rush and, you know, uh, just Pink Floyd. And I, I listened to all. I was listening to everything. And I never uh, – conform to any one thing i always liked all of it and um i was a little bit sheltered uh in my in my early teens um we moved to to nyack the nyack area and uh i wasn't a very good student i got in trouble a lot so i I was kind of like i was kind of forced to just sit in my bedroom and which I didn't mind. I had comic books and music. So, you know, the, the torturous thing for me was we're going to take away your stereo. Like that was their, you know, we're taking away your cell phone back then was because the TV didn't work. Cause I didn't give a fuck. Um, but, uh, which forced me to read more and, and, uh, you know, um, but then when, uh, I, I moved, I, I left my home when I was like 15 and then that started me on a path where, I started going to shows in New York and the scrap bar and CBs and continental. And so sure. I started doing all, and I was, you know, but I was, I was also at 15, I started drinking, uh, real heavily. Oh, you, you too. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. um, I was a blackout drinker. Like I drank to oblivion on a regular basis. And, uh, and that's how I lived my life for like 10 years, man. So like, I have tons of memories, but they're all blurry and fucked up because I, I just, I drank through everything. And, uh, um, and then, so, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're drunk, like I was, everything in life was secondary, uh, including music and family and friends and everything. It was, and, and that's just, and then on my 25th birthday, um, I, uh, I, I was uh, totally suicidal and uh, I was drunk and drugged out on Coke and dust. And, uh, and, um, and I, uh, I, I was thinking about, I was trying to do leaving Las Vegas. I was trying to, every time I woke up that week of my birthday, I was pissed. I was like, fuck man. I was really hoping that I would something crazy because I was too much of a coward to just kill myself. So, uh, but I, I, uh, I ended up uh, getting sober. I ended up uh, um, on uh, March 13th, 1993. I entered into a, uh, a detox, and uh, I've never drank since. Uh, I've been Good for sober you, man. Ever since. And that's, that's what, yeah. 20 something years, right? Tw- tw- 28 years, man. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you, so. brother. Good for and you. And then it was, you know, then it was, uh, you know, then, you know, what's funny is I woke up out of this drunken haze fog of 10 years, and then, uh, I meet uh, Jack Richard from TSOL, and uh, I go on the road with uh, his band, The Joy Killer, he had the time, which was uh, him and Ronnie King, um, who was yep. like, uh, uh, he was a keyboard player, and then had a, you know, um, uh, uh, Lagerborg on drums, who was Dave Lombardo's drum tech, and uh, this guy Lumpy, he was fucking awesome, and uh, and we went on the road for a while with Pennywise, and uh through that, I started doing like the warp tour and, and hanging out with like Bad Religion, No Effects, and I got into the whole Southern California punk scene, and um, so that kind of took me over. Then I found like I I I, I found Sublime. I actually recorded one of their. I recorded their on video their last show at at, at the Wetlands with uh, the Lords of Brooklyn and Wesley Willis Fiasco. And uh, wow, that was 1994. And uh, I, I, I gave that, all that footage to them, and they were going to make a documentary after he died. I, 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 
um, sent them that footage. And uh, I don't know whatever happened to it. It's just uh, I hope it sees the light of day one day. It was a great show. Uh, Lords of Brooklyn were great. You know, uh, Wesley Willis was a fucking just a shit show, man. It was, punk you know, rock saved that skin. punk rock saved yeah, you, man. Yeah, man. So I I, I got into that. So how, how does was, how does how does this? And I, and I was se- sober. Yeah. How does this yeah. segue? I and I've heard this story, and it's a great story. How does this segue? like to you uh, living by the Viper room and, and starting to do like sort of tech work and how did the, right. the story of you, of you getting into Exodus is, is, is really a great story. Could you tell that? Yeah. So I, uh, I was living in New York. It was after nine 11. Um, it was like, uh, maybe like four months after nine 11 happened. I was living in Nyack when I, when that happened. And, um, uh, you know, you, uh, if you remember New York was just, it was, there was a, a sense of camaraderie in New York, but it was also just a very, the world had changed. It, it, sure. The world was different. Absolutely. And, um, and I just uh, needed to change. I needed, uh, I needed to do something different. So I decided to, I, my friend uh, Rob had moved in, uh, moved, was living in my place. Uh, he was on my couch and, and, um, and uh, he was, uh, he was in, from England. He had moved here from Middlesbrough and, uh, so I gave him everything I owned and I got on my motorcycle and I, and I left and I, I, I said, I'm going to California. And what do you do there? I don't know. I'll figure it out when I get there. I don't know. I'll, I was getting, I was really into scuba diving at the time. So I figured maybe I'll, I'll be a scuba dive instructor, you know, something like that. So, um, so I got on my bike and I rode down and at this point, uh, me and my mother had like, had this falling out. It was like this weird dynamic. Me and my mom are, are, are really close, but we had this thing where we just we're so both so stubborn and grudge holders, and we had this this argument, and it just it had been like a two years since I talked to her, like you know, and it was it was weighing on me. So I got on my motorcycle, and I she was living in uh, Jacksonville Beach, Florida, and I I drove to my motorcycle. I went through. Uh, West Virginia, down through the mountains through Tennessee, and I rode, took all the back roads, man, no freeways, all back roads, and I rode down to Florida, and I, uh, I, I knocked on her door at 2 o'clock in the morning, and um, she started crying. I started crying. We, we had this really, went on her porch, and I, I smoked cigarettes at the time, and we smoked like a pack of cigarettes and drank the coffee, and, and we had this, um, this really meaningful conversation that led to me like there was like this huge weight lifted off of me and I, I i for the first time in my in my whole life i felt like okay in my own skin you know it was like a weird i can't explain the feeling that's the only way i can say it is sure. i i just felt at peace with myself and uh i stayed there for a little while hung out um we had some good laughs we went to a couple blues shows she's a big blues fan and uh and then I and then I continued on my journey, and I, I went to L.A. and uh, my friend Jason Christopher, who plays in uh, Prong, sure. and he he's playing he in, in uh, Corey, he was in Ministry and yeah, Ministry. He's doing Corey Taylor's new band and uh, yeah, Stone so, Sour. Yeah, so he uh, he had a place in uh, right next to the Viper Room, and uh, and I I I fucking I uh, I arrived. He was on tour with this other band, and I I but he left the keys at the Viper Room for his apartment. And uh, he says, oh, my keys are with the door guy. It ended up being uh, Johnny Chow. <laughs> from, <laughs> from, <laughs> so Johnny Chow uh, hands me the keys. He goes, ah, I'll go take a shower, chill, I'll come back. I was like, all right, cool, back. And it's my first night in L.A. I fucking go back. I'm hanging out with Johnny. We're outside bullshitting. This chick starts talking to me. And the next thing I you know, she's like, let's get out of here. And I just looked at Johnny and I went, all right, my first well, night welcome in L.A. To, welcome to the Sunset yeah. Strip, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah so i stayed there for a while and then uh i met uh, uh this guy jeff hickey and uh and jeff uh was like a roadie for like motorhead and and he did a bunch of a bunch of killer bands and stuff so jeff uh got me a gig at the uh at uh at the key club and the roxy and the el ray and uh you know viper room i i worked with elvis costello i worked with just killer bands, just doing cool shit. And I met Scott Koenig also. And then one mm-hmm. night, Jeff Jeff calls me. He says, hey, Scott's got this gig. 
you want to uh, you want to go do it? And I'm like, yeah, man, I'll, whatever. And uh, he goes to six weeks. It's in the States. You're going to live on a bus. It's Megadeth and Exodus. I'm like, ah, fucking hey, man. I love Exodus, man. And I, all my Exodus memories started coming out. Oh, yeah, I saw them fucking in 85. and fucking yeah, I saw them at Lemoore's. It was yeah. awesome. <laughs> so, right, so, you know, and then uh, I get on the – so there's no room on the Megadeth bus. So I'm on the uh, Exodus bus. And I walk on the bus, and it was like we were long-lost brothers. From the moment I walked on the bus, man, me, Rick, Tom, and Gary – just fucking hit it off like like uh like long lost brothers and um That's cool i did the tour i was their guitar tech i did all gary i did all of them i did gary rick and and jack uh, me and jack became buddies and i mean everybody in the band steve Escobar was singing at the time from skin lab yeah and uh so we do the whole tour wow I, I never last... saw that how was steve singing for them he was all right i you know honestly man i i you know i was so busy during the shows i don't yeah. really even remember i just remember that he was he was doing he was having a tough time remembering the lyrics because he didn't have a lot of time to rehearse he just he, he was kind of zephyr would just quit and they just threw him in the mix trial by fire you know what i mean so, yeah um, a battlefield was, battlefield commission yeah yeah so he had like big cheat sheets on the monitors which was you know which is fine i mean um <laughs> i even do that now you know, to my own fucking songs Anyway, so we all uh, do, bro. Fuck it. So, so uh, the last show it was in like Seattle, and um, Gary's like, "Dude, you should sing a song with us. Come up and sing a song." I'm like, "Nah." He's like, "Come on, come up and sing a song." I'm like, "All right." So I got up and I, I sang "Deranged," and uh, I butchered the fuck out of it, but I had fun, and you know. Anyway, that was like in that ended like right around Thanksgiving. I went on another tour with Satyricon. Um, right out, I went from one tour, I, I flew back to LA and got on a bus like the next morning and left with Satyricon. And, um, and then I was, uh, th that tour ended and I was in New York. I was getting tattooed by Larry Davis sure. in New York. And, uh, and I get a phone call and I look at my phone. Wow, I haven't heard that Hall. name in a minute. Larry Davis. Wow. Oh yeah. Dude. I talked to him the other day, man. I, yeah, yeah. He, did, he did my ex-wife's back, big, huge back piece. He did. On my oh yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Larry did from my knee all the way to my armpit. Like he did one huge. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he did, he did most, he's done most of my work. Uh, yeah. so I'm with Larry tattooed and, uh, and I get a call. It's Gary Holt. Hey man, we're looking for a new singer. And we, we, uh, we like what we saw when you did that song. So why don't you come out and do an audition? I'm like, okay. So, uh, I was after the holidays, I flew back and then, uh, on my motorcycle from LA and I rode up to San Francisco and I, uh, I tried out. And then, uh, a couple weeks later was NAM, the NAM convention in Anaheim. And then, uh, they told me at the Anaheim convention, Hey man, you're the new singer. And I was like, all right. That's awesome. A. That's yeah. awesome. Actually, when I hung up the phone, when I hung up the phone with Gary, I looked at Larry and I said, Hey man, I'm going to be the new singer of Exodus. And he just started laughing. He goes, you haven't auditioned yet. I went, I'm going to get the gig. Don't worry about it. I'll be all right. And then That's that was the spirit, it. Bro. Yeah. That's the spirit, bro. <laughs> and, and, and that first record you did with them, Shovel Kill Machine, right? Yeah, Shovel Head Kill Machine, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. that was the first one, right. And, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you were in the, you were, you did, uh, what, one, two, three, four, four, four records? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Four records. The first one was the toughest one because I, had, you know, look, man, I had never done this before, man. I was just a regular yeah. dude. I was just a fan. I mean, I'd been in bands, but nothing on this level. I was like a right, a mediocre guitar player at best. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> Let's uh, call a spade a spade. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, you know, and then, but none of the bands were anything uh, as as serious as this was. And I um, mean, I spent like weeks just listening and, and learning words learning lyrics and learning how sure. to do it and then i went to the studio and of course i fucking blow myself my voice out the first time i get in front of the mic the first day and uh it was just a uh, you know it was a learning curve and you know by the time we got to exhibit b man i kind of knew what the fuck i was doing and uh right. and then i started doing i started doing generation kill at the same time like right around that era 
I yeah, was doing I it because we I were, wanted to ask you about yeah. I wanted to ask you about that because I saw th yeah. there there was an overlap. What was what was the inspiration, the impetus to sort of let me do this on the side in the meantime? Well, so I was living in New York, and uh, the ex was in San Francisco, and I uh, like I'd go out get off tour and I'd go home and I just I was working a I, I worked at like a. Uh, like a machine shop, auto parts store place. And I was just kind of like, just kind of just, so I didn't have to sit around the house all fucking day. You know what I was doing anything. And then uh, I got together with some friends who I knew from high school. And I said, Hey man, let's just, let's just fucking play some music, man. So originally what we did was we did, uh, we had a, a band called Plant Piss, which was uh, I, the name from, uh, I got it from Metalocalypse, the episode where uh, it's uh, uh, Mur Murder Face's birthday. And he was like, I'm going to quit this band and start my side project, Planet Piss. And I'm like, oh, that's a great name. So I, I knew I know I was a voice on the show. So I called Tommy. I go, hey, can I use that? And you call my band that? He's like, yeah, of course. So, but we, but we were a Caius cover band. We just did Caius covers. We did Sky Valley in its entirety. And we did like Thumb and Caterpillar and a couple other songs. But we played like an hour of Caius music. And then those guys, then we, we got together. We're having fun doing that. And in the interim, we, uh, we wrote uh, like two originals and I was like, Oh, these are fucking good songs, man. We should record them. So that's, that's what started it. It was just like, yeah, let's just record these. So we started working with uh, my friend, John Corsiari and, uh, and he started recording the records and then we put together this demo and then, and then uh, my friendship with Zeus started to get a little, we, me and Zeus became good buddies. And then I, I, I got what serious was, was about now, it. Was, was Zeus was involved with the with the Exodus records, right? No, Zeus was no Zeus was doing Rob Zombie and uh, yeah. like Queens okay. and all that. Um, so Zeus was just an Exodus fan. He was just he came to a show. Okay. And that's how we became that's how we became friends. Um, but I said, hey man, would you would you produce this record for us? Because he's in on the East Coast, and he goes, yeah. So we uh, we put together our money together, and we we wrote all these songs and. Uh, and that, that became the album We're All Gonna Die, which is I, I mean the the first album is like a demo. This this album was like serious shit. Like we were like I, I the, the, the first I, the first know. album Red White and Blood that was you, that was yeah. sort of like a demo. It was a demo. We actually recorded it like in like six different like we did like two songs and then like four months later we did two more songs and then I was on tour for like six months so they did a couple songs and then when I came I home see. I just did the vocals real quick and so it wasn't like a a, a the focused deal. It was like kind of all over the map. And so that's why it was more like a demo than anything else. But we're all sure. going to die was we, we were in a room together. I, I had like two months off from touring and, and no shows and no, no recording with Exodus. So we had two months to like focus. So we got together a couple times a week and we just started writing songs and I didn't want to do a band that was a thrash band. I was already in a thrash band. Like I was yeah. already in Exodus. So I was like, well, let me try singing some other shit. Let me try to do some other things. So there's some weird songs on there. And like, I wanted the song to the album to kind of do this. I wanted it to be like sad wings of destiny or sad wings of destiny and news of the world by queen. Every song is its own song. It had its own vibe. There wasn't just like one level of, of music going across the table. It was, it was a very cool. Those albums to me were, were because they were so eclectic and they had, I mean, the piano song at the end of News of the World, and you had the piano song in in in, uh, in Sad Wings, and you had, you know, Dreamer Deceiver, and then you had the Tyrant, you know, and and yeah, you know, a Victim of Changes had all. They this. mixed it and up back then. So that's what I wanted to do. I was like, I do not want to do just. A, I want to do like a hard rock band. I want to be a rock band. I don't want to be a thrash band. I want to be able to do some mellow stuff, and I want to be able to do some slower, groovy stuff, and some dirt rock and some and take all those influences that, that I loved and bring them into one thing. And uh, that's just kind of what Generation Kill became. And yeah, then, you, um, yeah, you know, when I when I, of course, when I think of Generation Kill, I, I think uh, I think of uh, you guys and how you were gracious enough to contribute uh, to the film that I directed. Who the fuck is that guy? The Fabulous Journey of Michael Lago. I want yeah. to bring our friend on, Mr. Oh, Michael Lago. What's happening? Yeah. Hey, Rob. How are you? Hey, everybody. How are you? 
good. Thank you. I haven't seen you in a long time. Fabulous fucking interview. I didn't know you were that fabulous in interviews. <laughs> <laughs> you look great. Uh, love, the, love the glasses. Um, right you know, I never learned to drive. But nope. I love vintage cars so much. Anytime I see vintage cars, because they're so sleek and beautiful and I different, I always photograph them. Everything, know, now, everything nowadays looks like a fucking square box, you know? Yeah, it's fucking awful. Except for uh, McLaren, Porsche, and uh, Maserati. They're making okay. some fucking cars. Sure, yeah. sure. Still have yeah. wonderful shapes. <laughs> but, you, but you know what? While we're here, A. Lago, while we're here... Let's just take a second and talk about um, Generation Kills Music in our film and, and how and how great that was for us. Well, you know, I, I love Rob. I love the other Rob Yules as well. And uh, when I heard their um, one of their records, I just thought, well, this works perfectly with, you know, all the music that I've loved historically. Um, so, you know, we got the OK and we uh, did it. Yeah, this this stuff is great uh, in the film. It really, it drives it. it you know, it's perfect. Michael. Yes. Yeah, Michael was always my sounding board. He, well, what I would do is when I would I would send him part of the songs before uh -huh. they were even mixed all the way. I would be like, Michael, what do you think? And he would just be like, he was always such a uh, a good sounding board for good like what that. we were doing. <laughs> yeah, man, it was it was really, you know, and you know, it's just a you know beautiful human being. So yeah. Yeah, well, you know, we're, we're, uh, I'm gonna just go back just a second. When you okay. said you enjoy when you joined uh, Exodus, you know, it was like for you on the job training, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, pretty you much. Know? Yeah, <laughs> I was a fan also when I got my A and R job. I got my yeah. A and R job, and I told Drew this before. Um, I didn't even know what the fuck A and R meant, <laughs> and I'm in this fuck. I yeah. got a, I got a corner office on Fifth <laughs> Avenue at Electra Records, and I had to call somebody and say, "Could you tell me what A and R means?" And they laughed. <laughs> Honey, they they laughed in my face. And for those of you out there who yeah. don't know, A and R means artist and repertoire. It's the most important department at a record label. If you don't make great records, you get uh, that sell you get fired. And also, Rob, just to take you back to something you just said moments ago, while you were listening to music with big fucking heads, you know, phones and whatever, uh, you know, we didn't have money in Brooklyn back in the day. We lived under the train station under New Utrecht Avenue. And I had this little tiny, I thought I could carry, gray Panasonic record player. <laughs> and so my first records I got were um, from the Columbia House TV yeah. guy. When it, well, yeah, but honey, you, have, you had to read the fine print. <laughs> All those records moving forward were not a penny. But what I did was I got Alice Cooper's Killer from there. And then I used to go to Corvettes on Bay Parkway, where I got the Kiss album, the Sir Lord Baltimore album, Grand Funk, and Lou Reed. Those were the beginnings of my, I guess you could say, heavy listening. And yeah. uh, then it all went to punk rock and heavy metal and uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But here we are, and you look fantastic. I love the eyeglasses. God bless yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I, 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 I want to shout out Rob Ewells, too, who, uh, who plays in Generation Kill, who's also in the Alago film. Absolutely. Oh, cool. <laughs> Couldn't have it any other way, my buddy. And, and, you, amazing, and you know, amazing drummer. Yes. Amazing Yo, drummer, he, man. He is an amazing, killing machine. He's a human being, but just a, a, a machine drummer. Is, yep. Uh, brilliant. Yo, he's yeah. a hard hitter, that dude. <laughs> and, he, and he's tasteful. He's tasty, man. He, mm -hmm. he, he, he plays the hi hat with such, like, like Stuart Copeland, man. He's like, just, he has this thing that he just has. It's so. There good. he is. Hey, yeah. hey, there he is. What's oh. up, Rob? Hey. <laughs> We're definitely, talking, we're definitely talking about you, Yules. We're, fa we're, listen, we're, 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 we're fans of, of Rob Yules. And by the way, Alago, uh, Duke says that, you know, because the, uh -oh. the word's out there about the film and that we're looking to uh, do this um, epilogue and, and re-release the film, uh, we might need to put some new generation kill music in it, you know? They yeah. want to be in it. We, whatever they have that's fabulous for us to use, we're going to use yeah. it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Key, whatever you need. Keyword, 
Keyword fabulous. Always. Yeah. <laughs> Always fabulous. Yes, indeed. <laughs> All right, Alago. I love you, man. I'll talk I to you soon. You too, Rob, be in touch. Continue to have a great interview here. You're doing beautiful. I love everything you're touching on here. And um, I'll see y'all later. Talk to you. Thank you. I, I love, love you, you too. Thank you very much. Well, there you go. Our friend Michael Alago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love that guy. Yeah, he loves you too, man. Hey, let me take a, um, a sponsorship break here for a couple minutes, and then we'll come back and we'll do Album of the Week with Sid the Kid, and we'll keep things moving, all right? All right. What's happening? This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, and our guest today is Rob Dukes from Generation Kill, uh, formerly of Exodus, and we are sponsored by... The Organic Grill, the Texas Silver Rush, Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, DTFM Vinyl Distro, Chacho's Tacos, Generation Records, and New York Hardcore Comics opened in 2013, selling comic books, punk rock, and hardcore memorabilia, toys, statues, skateboard decks, tapes, vinyl, and all things horror. We love helping bands push their demos and new tracks, so please stop by and drop off your new music. We have in-store events like Magic the Gathering and Warhammer Tournaments plus meet and greets with bands and some live performances. Open seven days a week and shipping worldwide. Find us online through Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and eBay. Located at 117 Main Street in lovely Dobbs Ferry, New York. www.newyorkhardcore.comics.com. Also, The Organic Grill is a vegan restaurant located in East Village of New York City at 123 First Avenue. Featured in New York Times and Veg News, the dishes have won numerous awards, including Best Veggie Burger. They make their own cheeses, sausages, and burger patties, and every dish on the menu can be made gluten-free. This year, they're celebrating their 21st anniversary, and they're all about having a great time while enjoying amazing clean food. They have now fully reopened for business and look forward to seeing you. Get in touch with them and order some great food at www.theorganicgrill.com. How about the Texas Silver Rush? It's a jewelry design firm and boutique store located in the birthplace of the Texas country music scene in Fredericksburg, Texas. They specialize in working with musicians in all music genres to design and create unique one-off pieces, as well as to style them for stage, album covers, promo photos, and social media exposure. Their client list includes Rock Roll Hall of Famers, Greg Rollet, Ringo Starr, and of course, Agnostic Front. During this current pandemic, which seems to be never ending, all information and online sales are being taken at their Facebook and Instagram page. And of course, www.thetexassilverrush.com. Want to mention a couple of the other, the next, next four shows coming up. That would be the next, next four shows. On Wednesday, August 11th. Glenn E. Friedman, photographer and producer, is coming on the show. Now, I think I'm going to say this now. I'm sure no one's paying attention, but we're going to have to move the Glenn Friedman show up an hour or two. I'm not sure exactly what time. He's got a scheduling thing. We don't want to reschedule the show. For the first time, we might start a show at one in the afternoon. Don't be scared. It's going to be a great show. You're still welcome. Wednesday, August 18th, Sam, Sammy Town McBride from Fang is coming on the show. An interesting character, sometimes controversial character. Sunday, August 22nd, it's the Urban Discipline Biohazard Reunion. Get your shoes and socks on, kids. It's right around the corner. We are excited about this one. And then after that, on August 25th, Joel Ghostin will be on the show um, musician, Pig Face, The Undead, Electric Frankenstein. So lots of great shows coming up. Don't be scared. I saw, I want to shout out Mark Tolch up in Canada who is watching this on the big screen. All right? There you go. Don't pick my nose on the big screen. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cancel some plans then. It's going to be a little bit early. Don't be scared, bro. Take my hand. It's it's okay. You know? Um, I have the feeling thousands of people are missing out on the New York Hardcore Chronicle show. Share with your friends. 
Hey, a lot of people circle back now. A lot of people are out uh, during the day. A lot of people circle back and watch the show once it's archived. Not as many people watch it live, but a lot of people circle back and watch it uh, once it's archived. Um, Joe Frank, great one today, Drew, as if I expected anything less. You know, take off. Not miss, yeah. Don't don't miss Glenn Friedman. It, it's going to be good. You know, that's that's a that's a that's a unique interview right there. You know what I'm saying? Um, Want to mention what was that a while ago? Sorry, but no, you should be able, no. What's the problem, sweetheart? I can't comment in the comment section. That's weird. You should and be I able to do that. Or maybe, got, maybe you need cold. to listen. Maybe you need to get off the show. I'm going to kick you off the show. Here, I'm going to kick you out. Try now. Bye. Anyway, look for Alago in the comment room. Um, that said, um, I want to mention, and I know I'm preaching to the choir here for the most part, but hey, it's part of the show. There is a Patreon page. Patreon is what makes this show happen. Your support is dutifully, dutifully needed. And want to shout out my new patrons, Linda Nardelli, Jeff Steiner, and Marcus at Punk Oi Hardcore. Thank you for supporting the show. Thank you for making this happen. Don't be shy. Let it fly. Uh, you know, join Patreon. There's a $2 tier, you cheap fuck, a $5 tier, a $10 tier, so on and so forth. We're going out and doing the, uh, the walking tour, um, 10 questions, all that stuff. Go, go, check out, uh, go check out Patreon. So. There you go. What happened, Toots? What well, happened? There's not a space that I could comment in comments. And I even signed in and got a code. Early. But you've done it before. You've commented before. I know, but how do I get back in here? If it's if it's a pain in the ass. I don't know. I, Happy, ja I Happy Jack back. says he's calling you. Are you in now? Happy Jack, call a lago and sort it out. So So there you go. Drama. Mad drama. You think there's drama in hardcore? <laughs> How about that? So yeah, there's also a PayPal page. Um, there's a merch line underneath. We got the New York Hardcore. We got we got the mugs. We got the shirts. All that stuff. Maybe you want the shower curtain. Maybe you want the New York Hardcore pillow to prop your girl's ass up on. I don't know. Check it out. It, it, it's 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 all available on there. Um, yeah, there is drama in hardcore. Tell me about it. Try singing for a hardcore band. You want drama? Join a hardcore band. There you go. Um, Urban Discipline Rules. I'm checking that episode out. Okay, good. Absolutely. The socks. Yeah, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. Heggs, Heggs has the socks. Uh, what else? Also, if you're watching this in a re in, in a rerun on YouTube, please subscribe to the subscribe to the uh, channel, the Stone Films NYC channel. And also, I know I don't mention this often, but on Instagram, follow me slash the show on Instagram at Stone Films NYC. I assume that you have a communication device. Get on Instagram right now, you lazy fuck, and join me on Instagram. Um, what else? I think I covered a lot of it. Um, pretty sure. Yeah, that's good. Everybody good. I use my New York hardcore flamethrower daily. Yes, for sure. We want the pillow. <laughs> She wants the pillow, or maybe he wants the pillow. Who am I to say? Who am I to say? Who am I to comment on your sexual preference, my friend? Whatever you're into, goddamn God bless, right? To everybody out there, I hope you're all out there getting laid, okay? Just, just for the record. Um, all right, let me clear the deck. Let's bring our guest back on. Hold on, hold on. Let's bring him on. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Goodbye to that. Goodbye to this. Goodbye to that. Goodbye, cruel world. Okay, here we go. Um, let's bring Mr. Rob Dukes back on. Boom. Hey, man. I got, yeah. you know what? I got a, a um, I have a, uh, uh, what do you call it? A super chat, which, which sometimes our people do once in a while. Brings him to the front of the line. He's got a question. Will we see a generation kill tour up here in Canada in 2022? Dillinger fan one wants to know. I, I really hope so, man. I, I one of those things that we're, we're starting to 
do tours now and set up tours now for next year. And um, so we had to kind of start over. We had a, a few uh, changes with members and stuff. So we started a whole new page. So like you, we need people to go on the YouTube and subscribe to us and try to get our, you know, watch our videos and listen to yeah. our music on Spotify and all that stuff just to get our numbers up. So we have, so we can say, Hey man, there's people that want to see us. And that's, I mean, I, dude, I, I love touring. You know what I mean? I love the camaraderie of it and I love playing in front of the people and playing live is, you know, is really the, you know, one of the greatest feelings um, that I've ever felt, you know, it's up there with, it's up there with sex, man. It's really good. You know, it's, it's, there's something about it. You, you can't explain it to the average person what it, what happens. Touring's not for everybody, but if you love it, no. <laughs> if you love it, you love it. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've been to 108 countries, man. I've the world, and uh, and I, I love it, man. It's uh, I love I, I love meeting the people and, and eating the, the cultural food of wherever I'm at, and just just being a part of the going and checking out the town I'm in and hanging out with people. And, um, I had this memory lately of uh, I was in Belfast, Ireland. And I was getting lunch by myself, and uh, at this little cafe, like like blocks and blocks away from the from the gig, because I was looking for. Uh, I was looking for Banksy art on the, in the wild. And um, next day I'm sitting there, man, and like four fans were at the bar and they bought my, my meal. And then they invited me over. I sat at the bar with them and uh, I drank coffee and talked uh, for like hours. Then there they were at the show that night. And we had, it was just such a cool thing. And, you know, and people like that are all over the world, man. I have friends all over the world because of situations just like that. And uh, I want to- Gary, says, to Gary that. says that was me. Gary uh, Alford says that was me. <laughs> Yeah, fucking dude, and that place was. Those people were so brilliant and loving and awesome and just and funny. I mean, goddamn, I've had so many good laughs with people, you know. Um, and uh, yeah. Any place, any place that. Um, oh, look at this! Hallelujah, Michael Alago can comment now. See, mm. persevered. <laughs> Sid, relax, Sid. You're coming on in a second. Uh, Alago sorted it out. Hey, oh, look who says hi, Chris Contos. Hey, Rob Dukes. Hey, what's fucking me and Chris? So, Machine Head played. Love there, that like, dude, uh, yo, Chris Contos. We love you, bro. Fuck it, I love Chris to death, man. He's one of yeah. the biggest Exodus fans in the world. I watch. We were, dude. He would do shows. He would come and he would do the walk across the crowd on their heads, man. He was, <laughs> oh, man, he was so great. But Chris, I, I did a, a show, uh, Machine Head played on the last tour that came to Phoenix, and I jumped up and sang with uh, with the Chris, and we did uh, Lesson of Violence. And uh, yeah, I mean, what an amazing night, man. Fucking love those. Yeah. yeah. Hey, let's Burn do- my um, eyes, man. Yeah. Let's bring on Sid the Kid, and let's do um, Album of the Week. What's up, okay. Sid? What's up, guys? How are Sid, you, buddy? Uh, what's up, Sid? Yeah. yeah. Are you ready, Sid? <laughs> Oh, uh, is is Rob ready though? Is he ready? Yeah, yeah Rob's Maybe. ready. Maybe I hope yeah, I hope yeah. know the album we're talking about because I mean you do, you will. I didn't. Oh, you you will know this one. We we do our homework okay. with this stuff. Hold on, let me All find right. it. Let me find it. I now do credit I... Drew for this one because I was a little stumped, but he threw this one at me. I was like, ah, oh, piece of cake. Yeah. Yo, let, let's be frank. He wanted to do he wanted to do S O D, speak English or die, and I was like, nah, that's cool. Nah. That's so it's cool. cool. So, right. nah, but when so Drew, instead, instead, we went with this. Boom! Motherfucker. Ooh. All right. Yeah. So, because yeah. I know, I know you have some history with TSOL and with Jack, yeah. and I thought, I thought that would tie in. So, Sid, take yeah. it away. All righty, guys. So, you know, today I'm going to talk about this one because you know, as much as it's been mentioned but never really covered, there's no better time than now to do this. So obviously, as you can tell here, this is TSOL's first rele uh, full-length release entitled Dance With Me, which was recorded, I believe, in the spring of 1981 and then, of course, released later that, uh, I believe, in June of the same year at Redondo Pacific Studios of Redondo Beach, California, and was released uh, by Frontier uh, with Tom Wilson producing this. Uh, the cover itself is so iconic. I believe Mark Wassman uh, did the, uh, the, the, the artwork for the front and back cover of this and the photography 
obviously Drew mentioned this was also taken by Glennie Freeman and Edward Culver. Now, Tom Wilson, who obviously did produce this record, was initially hesitant at the time to work with TSO Wall just because of the repu- uh, the violent reputation they had, and he was very apprehensive about it. But as you recall, in 1988, uh, you know, people said to me, "Are you sure you want to do this?" And you know, honestly. They were one of the most hardest working bands at the time, especially within the studio, uh, you know, and at Jack Grissom's like instance, he wanted to sit down on the floor while he was recording his vocal tracks, which even to me sounds a little strange, but hey, it is what it is, you know? And and also too, just a little side note, even Jack credited himself as Alex Morgan on the sleeve of the record. Now you know <laughs> why, because yeah. if, if you know Jack well enough or if you even read his, his uh, biography, you know, a lot of crazy things happened back in the day. So, of course, to evade police and kind of give it that mystery to the fans, he would use a, a different, like, little alias on the record. Um, but even at one point, even earlier when uh, the first EP came out, he they just, like, you know, the whole thing with him rocking makeup, even when he was a skinhead at the time, he did that just to, just to bum everybody out because he didn't yep. give a fuck. Jack was Jack. Yep. You know, honestly. Still like that. Oh, yeah. But, that, but that's why we love Jack so much. You know, this album, you know, when you first hear it, you know, you don't know what to make of it at first. Because simply it's, you know, when you think punk rock, you know, you think of other bands, but not necessarily this band. Because you hear it's all kinds of different sounds in one. You have death rock. You have punk. You have what is now known as hardcore. But all that mixed in, when you listen to it, you know, one or two times over, or two times over, you get it. You know, and it's something, you know, it, it's inspired so many other bands in later years, even the Misfits, when they started going their route, it started to sort of more, you know, gothic and not as punk. When, when you hear, uh, I believe, like Legacy of Brutality, for example, stuff like that. And, you know, it could be slightly, you know, it could be argued that it can be slightly inspired by this record itself. This record, yeah. this record was a trailblazer. Uh, Rob, does this resonate with you at all? Yeah, man. The the thing that resonates with me mostly is, is uh, the lyrics were very dark and weird. He sounded, he kind of had that Bowie thing going on. He was kind of doing, he always has, which I always loved about him. But he also, the there were so many aspects of the record that were like, Ron Emery's guitar playing, he played through a, a, a Fender Twin with a, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a distortion that he had such a unique sound that it was, that's what blew me away was his guitar tone was so unique and so cool. And uh, and of course, you know, uh, you know, code, code Blue was the first. To me, <laughs> it was the first song I heard that was like, "Holy shit, he's talking about fucking a dead girl!" Like that's <laughs> where my brain. That's my brain, right? That's like, oh right. man. So like at that time. So when I had the, I, I Jack. Jack saved my life. I, I I have to admit that when I had a year sober, I I met Jack in, in 1994, and um. I was having a rough go of it. I, I had gotten sober, but I was still trapped inside this. I don't know how to. I don't know how to live in my own skin. That was the thing, right? And uh, Jack, like, I don't say he took me under his wing, but I remember sitting down with Jack and having these deep conversations about stuff. And we 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 hardly we never talked about music. We never talked about the band. He would do shows. And I was I was on a, a short tour with him, and then. We would spend all night talking about sobriety. We would go to meetings together. We would. We. I, I went and stayed at his house for like a month. Um, I lived in his. Uh, he had a little, like a little apartment garage, and we'd go surfing every morning. And we would go to meetings and we would talk. And he, he was such a, an, an inspiring. As crazy as he was, he was also just very honest. He was most, the most honest person I ever met. And that's kind of what I took away from it was that he, he allowed me to be okay in my own skin and I and I um and I directly I know that he he I I, I mean I've told him this but I told him dude you just saved my life man you, you just saved my life you were one of those people that just were so impactful to me that um and you know I I I, I like the uh, you know the later albums he's done and then I got to sing on the Joy Killer records when he did yeah. the Joy Killer which Tell was us about that Billy um it was so Jack's doing the Joy Killer. TSOL was, singing, I think his brother-in-law was singing, doing the new band, um, and he was did this band with uh, Billy from the Weirdos and uh, and Sean Greaves and um, and, uh, and Lumpy was on drums. 
And they invited me out to come out and just hang out. And I got to sing backups with uh, Jim from Pennywise and, and uh, Tim Armstrong and uh, a couple of guys. And we just got to do all the back uh, backup vocals for the for two of the Static and then Joy Killer 3. And it was just, uh, it was my first, you know, and it was, it, they, I don't know why he did it. I couldn't, I wasn't a singer at the time. I wasn't anybody. I was just a regular guy. But, you know, uh, Jack being the friend that he was at the time, um, you know, I, I remember going, I had like four years sober, going through some shit. And he said, just come out and hang out. And uh, I hung out for like a week. I went and saw, I stayed with uh, at his mom's house one night. We hung out and, and uh, you know, he took me all around L.A. And um, it just, uh, we just, he was just a beautiful human being. And he's crazier than fuck. He's crazier want, than fuck. I mean, he is the guy that he is. <laughs> but, but he's Jack also knows what he, Jack knows so. what he's doing. Yeah, man, totally. I want so, to like, share something with you guys. Um, this is a flyer that I made almost 40 years ago um, when I was in my first band up in Boston, when I was up there for a little bit going to college, I was in the Mighty CO's and wow, almost look at that. 40 years ago, I, ma I made this flyer. It was the Mighty CO's, the FU's and TSOL, the first time they ever played uh, in Boston. And uh, we played at a place called the Gallery East that, that was a... Uh, you know, it was it was an art, it was an art space. But better than that, I actually have a picture from that show. But it always it always comes back to the Planet of the Apes, doesn't it, Drew? It kind of <laughs> does, right? Here's a shot. Here's a shot of TSOL playing Gallery East on the stage on the stage that we built. You know, with the with the blocks, with the cinder blocks and everything. And wow. there, there's there's Jake and and uh, there's a. Uh, uh, in front of the in front of the white pole is the infamous Jake Phelps that went on to be the uh, editor of Thrasher magazine, and uh, that's TSOL's first show ever in Boston at Gallery East, um, and you know we played with them. Larry Kelly was wow. there. That's right, Larry wow. Kelly. Wow. Yep. Yeah, man. So that's amazing. That's, that's amazing, man. Yeah, it gets, I, it, I saw it, I saw Jack right before the pandemic. He, TSOL came here and we hung out and did a great time, man. He always tells funny stories. Whenever he's on stage, uh, he tells the found there. He'll tell a story about what a miserable fucking nightmare I was when I first got sober. What a what a whiny little bitch I was. And it's always funnier <laughs> than fuck. He's he's uh, he's so funny on stage and he's so real. And and, uh, and I, I when I became a singer, I took that, I took that yeah. and yeah. used it because Jack just uh, just be yourself. And if you be yourself, you can't go wrong. Like you can't, you know. And that's just what I did. And uh, I, I credit Jack with all my success in, in sobriety and in music because he was he was such an influence on me as a human being. So. You know what I picked up? You know what I picked up from Jack in, in my later years? How when he's on stage, he, he kind of does this perpetual motion thing where he's 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 sort of going going you know, like I I find myself doing this like a Jack Grisham thing. I just <laughs> like even you know just sort of like well, you know yeah, you just you just chiming moving, around always moving like I'm not I'm not yeah. a teenager I'm not a teenager anymore but but I could I could sort of you know <laughs> do, do this do this <laughs> bit, you know? I used awesome. to do that and then I, and then I realized that I needed to, to find myself. So I uh, I became you remember that scene in um, the, the Star Wars uh, Episode One when Darth Maul and uh, and they're fighting and the, and the red wall comes up and he's like just pacing and staring at him with that look on his like waiting for the wall to come down so they can fight again. That's who I'm on stage. So I'm I'm Darth Maul, just an angry shit bag. Yeah. Sid, <laughs> Sid, well done, man. Uh, what's going Thanks, on? Thanks, Sid. With that you? was what's awesome. Going on with your show, man. Oh, I, as you see, guys, I'm uh, doing another show this coming Wednesday. Uh, this coming Wednesday, July 28th, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, check me out over at mixlr.com backslash SDK Sound System. And you can follow me on Instagram, Sid the Kid underscore Sound System. I've been putting up tons of content, especially, you know, especially with what's been opening up. Uh, one huge shout out to uh, Mr. Hardcore Shutterbug because it was his birthday. I don't know if you're out there, Stephen, but happy birthday, boy. And uh, you know, also a big shout out to those who came out and you know, 
We talked about this earlier in the show, but if you were at this one specific show yesterday at East River. Yeah, uh, Sid, Sid a couple people are asking, were you at that show last night? Ex Real quick, Sid, explain what was going on. Well, long story short, if you ever heard of a band called Dead City, they're from LA, you could look them up. Just look up Dead City Punks, P-U-N-X on Instagram. The content they have is, is phenomenal and is amazing. They literally have that DIY aspect literally from equipment how they set up the shows they did this show yesterday with no permit nothing they just went there set it up little groups of people brought stuff up at, 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 the, it, at the band shell um, at, at the amphitheater the fdr yes drive? yes the amphitheater that's where, they, that's where they film wild style that, that, that yeah yeah pretty there. much yeah. hey yeah there you go where, where is he where yeah. where is uh Hold on. RS70, yo. That's where they shot Wild Style back in the day in that band shell. Yep. And, yep. Rich, and Rich Zoller was there too. And I can't wait to see what what stuff he has. Yeah, like, Rich, it Rich was. All, all, and I will, I'll say this too. The one last thing I'll say before I go. Let's put it this way. Obviously, it was not in the best condition, this, this, this amphitheater. It's just there. You know, yeah. it's like letting it go. The city's letting it go, whatever. So, you know, the band show, when I walked up there, there was maybe one or two stickers, no joke. At the end of the night, the whole, from front and the behind, literally is covered in graffiti. Now, I'm surprised just for the shits and giggles of it, depending if I might go after the show, I'm gonna go right back down there, take photos of the aftermath if the city hasn't already touched it, already like covered it up yet. Cause I guarantee you when the parks departments by now have seen this, that, that whole thing's coming down. They're redoing the whole park. It's very complicated. Oh, no, no, I know, I know. But just the fact that they, they're looking at this, like, they're shitting cinder blocks because it was, like, it was amazing. But just also the fact, you know, having bands there and, like, there were, like, just artists. Like, you know, you had graffiti artists there. You had... And just, All right, you know, Sid, I got to show this stuff. I know. I'm, I'm, hey, I hey, know Sid. never went on, but... Hey, hey, Sid, real quick, man. Thank you for the TSOL deal. That was awesome. Um, thank you, you got, thank Drew for that one. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I, I got to sing with uh, the old firm casuals. They were here uh, about a year ago. And I got up and I sang um, uh, uh, Thunder. Uh, what the fuck is the name of that song? Anyway, it's off uh, the new album, the last album they did. But I got up and sang with it. And uh, it was, I mean, uh, if nobody's listened to old firm casuals, they are a fucking killer fucking band. Yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're really awesome. good. Their the new album has been taking off really good. Like pre-pandemic, they played here. Uh, they played at St. Vitus in, in Brooklyn, and they killed yeah. it. Yeah, they killed it. Yeah, they played here at a little little pub, man, and I went and saw them and hung out, and it was killer. And, uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, thanks right. for Sid. Hey, Sid, I'll talk to you in a bit. All righty, guys, and have a great show, everybody. Cheers. Well, well done, Sid. Thank you. All right, there you go. DJ Sid the Kid brings it, you know? Yeah. So I want to ask you, and, and a couple of our people have, um, you know, being that we're in New York, what what's uh, you're a big um, you're a big New York Rangers uh, fan. I'm the biggest New York Rangers fan. Yeah. Yeah, and we got a couple. We got a couple big ones out there. And, <laughs> and someone, someone sent me. Someone sent me this shot, this shot, and because what comes up behind this shot is. This, which is which is only another New York Ranger guy would 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 have these shots to send to me, right? This shot, yeah. of course, you're wearing the Sean Avery jersey. <laughs> Fucking a, dude, love that guy. Love that guy. Today. Favorite hockey player of all time. Uh, yeah, tell us about your love dude. for the New York Rangers and, and and how that came about. Well, when I grew up in New York, everyone I knew was an Islanders fan because that's <laughs> when they were winning all the Cubs. So I became a Rangers fan out of just pure fucking spite, you know, and uh, it just became a love affair. And I've loved the team uh, for so long. And and uh, so we, the guitar player, is a Flyers fan. So he would wear it. When we played we played Philly, he'd be wearing a Flyers jersey. I'd, be wearing, <laughs> I'd wear my Rangers jersey. Just talk such shit to the crowd. And it was great. It was always a real, like, hockey love. Like, But I, I played in Toronto during the playoffs and Toronto didn't make the playoffs, of course. Uh, and, uh, I was wearing an Avery Jersey and people were spitting on me and yelling at me. And I was like, fuck you. My team made the playoffs. You fucking cunts and fucking, but after the show, we we're all laughing and having a good time. And it was, uh, it's, you know, the hockey culture is hockey culture, you know, it is what it is. But, um, 
Yeah, but I just, uh, you know. That's awesome. I, that, that, I that's awesome. It. You know, Sh it. Sean Avery, Sean, Sean Avery is like a, like a controversial dude. Uh, you know, I, follow, I don't know if you follow him on Instagram, but he's I a do, big, I do, I love him. I love him. You know, all his that. shit with the bike lanes and all that. Oh, yeah, all that was hysterical. <laughs> yeah. Actually, when, I, when, the, when, I, when the Never Relent video, the new video came out last month, Sean actually sent me a message. He goes, I love this song, man. Good job. And I was blown away. I mean, I actually met Sean after a, a game one night um, and uh, had a conversation with him. Um, we talked about Bonnaroo and we talked about music and stuff. He's a big Radiohead fan and I am too. And we just kind of, we just kind of bonded for a few minutes. And then we just like slight, we're not, I don't say we're not friends. I'm not acquaintance. We talk on social media back and forth through text and stuff like that. And he's a very, very cool guy. I, uh, it's I, it's I funny him. because for a while he was on the short list of guests to come on the show. Early mm. on when I started, I was like, you know who I'd like to have on the show? Sean Avery. Fuck and it was Sean sort of, and like, and then it, we sort of like, we, we got, you know, it, it sort of faded out because for a while he was like, he was constantly, you could see he was posting shit like, right? Oh, he's right out in the street. We might as well get him on the show, you know? <laughs> right. If you ever do, man, please call me and let me get in on it for just for a minute, man. Yeah, it's for sure. Yeah, dude, yeah. You know who, you know who no. we're close with is Chris Cott, is Kotze, you know? Uh, Chris Kostopoulos, uh, you know, that played yeah, on the yeah. Rangers. He, he, we're, we're yeah. close with him. He's a friend of ours, and uh, cool, man. Right he's, he's a fan of the show. Um, yeah. yeah, and I like how this Generation Kill shirt. You, you guys actually kind of did a, uh, yeah, we a, stole the logo. an homage, an homage yeah. to the Rangers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's the, great. The end the NC was for Nightcrawler. It was my friend Steve. Well, me and Steve were really big Ranger fans. He was a uh, you know, just a really good dude. And I, I, uh, on the back of that is his name. Is this is uh, Steve Giacobello is on his. Uh, we put his name on the back, and we sold those just at the show. We did to all the money we took from that show. We gave to his family after he passed away. He was uh, hit in a uh, by a car and killed at work. And um, yeah, so we we made those just for a one off. For is Steve that because, uh, is that is this. This is one of Stephen Messina's photos, I believe. Is that him? That's Steve. That's Steve, man. Yeah. Yep. He was, he was yeah, really good Yeah, there it is. Yeah, we got, we got it. We got it, yeah. Steve. Yep. He was, yeah. he was a really good friend, and I, I love that guy. I miss him. It was, uh, recently, it was his birthday, and I, I, you know, I have a picture of him on my fridge, and I think about him all the time. And uh, I miss him so much because we, we call each other during hockey games and yell at the TV together and be on the phone through the whole game <laughs> and just uh, – yeah, I mean, he was would such that, a, would that be yeah. would that be a, a a leech jersey he's wearing or a Messier jersey? I think that was um, I think that was a actually a, a Callahan jersey. There you go. Because yeah, he was. I I don't remember. I know that uh, I have like fifty jerseys, and I know that he did too. He actually went to the. I still have it. He went to the Philadelphia Ranger game, the outdoor game in Philly when the Rangers won. Uh, in overtime, and uh, he brought me back, and I still have it. And I don't wear it that often. I only wear it on special occasions because I don't want anything bad to happen to it. And um, but he gave me a jersey that's on my wall. I don't, I don't wear it. It's on my wall. He gave me a lunch jersey, and uh, he was just a just a fucking great guy, man. It's just uh, that's cool, man. You know. Oh, yeah, you, yeah. you know what? Let's let's put up a couple of pictures because, uh, and and let's let's just talk about it a little bit, okay? What's happening yeah. here, man? Uh, that's me and Jeff Hanneman, man. I had a, I was actually, that was a tech for Exodus on that tour. And we went and saw Slayer on a night off and I had a, a fucking Mohawk and, uh, I just come off another tour and, and, uh, me and Jeff were hanging out and, uh, yeah. And he was a good dude. Actually, uh, the last time I saw Jeff was, uh, we were in France. We opened up for Slayer in, in France and he was, I looked over side of the stage and he was, he was watching beer in his hand. He was like, fucking just thought it was and that's my last memory of Jeff and man, of, of that uh, good dude man good guy Steven Messina just sent me this photo which is fucking great hold on which answers it, it answers the question I see some of our other friends in this photo of him wearing that jersey and it turns out that it was a Messier jersey. Yeah. There it is. Oh, okay. All right. And there's, our friend, right. Yeah. there's our friend yeah. Jojo. And uh, yeah. 
I guess it well, that was a was a mess. That one that was, was a, a messy yeah. yeah, it was that's a awesome. Show. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he, dude, that's he awesome. had like uh, he had he had probably a hundred jerseys. He wore a different one every time. I fucking saw. Him. Uh, yeah, and, and also if you I look if you too. look at the I jersey. If you look at that jersey, that's the quality jersey. Like you could tell, like yeah, that's not the crappy I, yeah. iron-on bullshit jersey. No, 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 I don't. I don't have any of those, man. I don't those, have. Any. I have those. all real jerseys with the. I might actually have the 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 the, the pull downs on the inside. They have the little straps yeah. that they hook yeah, yeah. onto their pants. I the, all my jerseys are real, and uh, yeah, I have about twenty of them. I have fans sent me jerseys, dude. Uh, fans send me. I mean, I, I got so much. I went to a show in time in New York. This guy Jerry, we're actually. Uh, he does a show called the Metallic Cave, and, and uh, he does like a metal show. And um, mm-hmm. he gave me a Kreider jersey, a real one, like a fucking real Kreider. <coughs> it was awesome, man. And uh, yeah, the, you know, Rangers not to go off, are, not to go off on a man. tangent, not to go off on a tangent, but like Kreider's like the last man standing on that team. You know, I was hoping for a little bit more from Chris Kreider in in, in his Ranger career, but we'll see. Me too, man. You know what it is, man. He's. I, He's up and down. He like he he plays like a motherfucker, and then he just disappears. And then he plays like a motherfucker, and he disappears. And it's it's frustrating to watch. But he's a yeah. he's a he is a voice of in the room that kind of you know I, I I wish he would I wish he, I wish he would just name a captain already and let somebody lead yeah. the fucking team. You know there so, you go. But uh, uh, he actually said he didn't want it. But anyway, let's talk about let's talk about your um, collaboration. Uh, with with DMC from Run DMC, uh, a guy that I've worked with a bunch of times, and and, and I know, um, it, it, is this Fragile Mortals right here? Yeah, yeah, that was. Tell us about it. Mortals. So, um, I met Daryl at Rock on the Range. Uh, he saw us play, and uh, he was a fan. He was like, "Oh, you're awesome, man." We had a little conversation. I'm from, you know, I said uh, I grew up in Astoria. I lived there for a while, and. I'm from Hollis. I'm like, I know who the fuck they are. I know all about you, man. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, so we, we hit it off. And then um, a week later, uh, he uh, hit me up. He goes, dude, I heard this song, Connie Love You Did, on your new record. And me and he goes, I want to write a record with you. I'm doing a solo record. Will you write a song with me? And I was like, absolutely. And I said, I got an idea. It's about a song about a lot lizard. He goes, what's a lot lizard? I go, that's a hooker that works at just truck stops. And he goes, okay, I'm in. And so the way it went down was I wrote, I had, I had Generation Kill had written music just for this. And um, we, uh, I had written lyrics and I was going to fly to New York and do the vocals with him at, at a studio. And he didn't know what I was going to write about. And I didn't know what he was going to write about. <laughs> All we had was the idea. Right and on. We just, we just did the song Lot Lizard, which is, uh, it's it's my favorite song on the record that we did. It was fucking brilliant. And what was great was we didn't know what each other were going to do, and it, it worked out fucking awesome. And then that led to, hey, let's do another song, and let's do another song. And there's, the next thing you know, we had like 10 songs, and then it just kind of like, we just kind of put it out. And, um, you know, Daryl being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and being who he is, he, he's surrounded by people who protect him and, uh, and, and have like a, a business thing. So the record kind of was just more like fun for him and it was fun for me to do was to kind of just, we just, we, we just liked each other. It was like, we had a friendship and we just made some music together and put it out there for the world. It's out there on YouTube for free. You can go ahead and just listen to it. And, and, uh, it's, it's a fun record. It's, it's, it's a, it's a mixture of rock and, and, uh, and rap and he does his thing and I do my thing and we kind of just made it work and mixed it together. And there's some good songs on there, man. There's, a couple ones that, have, eh, you know, whatever. We, you know, we, I think if we had stick with four songs, we would have been fine. But we got greedy and we kept nah. doing it. And as we, less, it sometimes kinda, less is you know, more. Sometimes less is absolutely. more. Absolutely. Right? And we we both laugh about it. We're like, yeah, we should have just done four songs. Would have been great. You know, just let it put it up. But uh, anyway, man, Daryl is is a, you know, it's a great human being. And, and uh, I actually talked I talked to him last week. And uh, I've worked you know, with him. Really I've really worked with him a couple of times through the years. This is the last time I worked with him uh, right before the pandemic. Uh, somebody was right. bringing back those glasses, those, those, uh, those, they're black not, flies they're, they. yeah, yeah, well, black not flies, black flies, they, yeah. I, 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 um, they're not, they're not Cassells, but um, some, and I, I worked on that, but of course I have a run DMC gold record on my wall from when I, when I did the, 
produce the uh, the video for them. And you know, and I told them like, what, what's really what's really uh, a good one is um, I worked on that. There's a promo that you could see on um, on YouTube for the Run DMC Beastie Boys Together Forever Tour. And I worked on that shoot with my brother. We were like PAs or something. And, oh, uh, shit. Wow. Yeah, and, and, and we all like hung out at, at, his, at his mother's house in the basement. <laughs> and like, like it was a whole day hanging out with those guys. So I've, right. I've worked with him a couple of times. He's, he's a good yeah. dude. And I, I know Bam, his manager, Eric, and, 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 mm -hmm. and that whole that whole squad, you know, so I went out, I, w I was in Vegas and I went and saw Penn and Teller. And then I, after the show, you can meet those guys. And I, I said hi to Teller. And then I walked over to Penn. I was like, Hey man, I, I just did a record with Daryl. It was like, Daryl McDaniels. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, no shit. And we had this great conversation about him because he was in their first video. And, uh, you know, so it was, it was, yeah, it was, Oh yeah, of course. Right. Yeah, everybody, no, that's everybody right. Loves uh, tr it's tricky, right? Tricky, tricky. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's the tie in. It's tricky yeah. to rock a ride. That was a great video, man. That's yeah. They, yeah, Penn and Teller were doing the uh, the three card Monty outside the thing, and then they come up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, and at the end, they get in the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was great. That that was yeah. great. You know, we're working with them, working with them back uh, when I was in the golden age of music videos was absolutely one of my like highlights. You know, like yeah, man. like thinking yeah. back, like. That was like run, you know, working with Run DMC was that was big in my world, you know. Yeah, uh, a couple of years ago, we uh, Fragile Mortos actually played with Run DMC. They did a, a in Pennsylvania. We did a one-off show, but we played on the two stages, and we played on one stage, and then we walked over and we watched Daryl do Run DMC after that. It was fucking phenomenal. They yeah. they don't they don't they don't perform often Run DMC anymore. They they're like they're like do like they do big big gigs only like they'll fly in and do like uh they'll do like pig pop and then that's it and then you won't see them for a year you know what i mean it's, yeah uh, and they're, i think they're having like a like a pretty tumultuous relationship going on it's been like that, that for a long <laughs> time he talked he talked about it in his book i so we did a song for his book we did a song called suicide well, he wrote a book called toy so uh-huh hey we got a shout out date whoa got a shout out dave shivare What's up, Dave from Il Nino? Hope things hope things are going uh, hope things are going well. Um, I'm gonna take a take a minute here. It seems like we lost Rob for a second, so let me take advantage of this opportunity to do um, to do some sponsor stuff. How about this is the New York Hardcore Chronicles live? And we are sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, The Texas Silver Rush, Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, DTFM Vinyl Distro, Chacho's Tacos, and, of course, Generation Records. Since 1992, Generation Records has been a mainstay in the New York metropolitan area music scene. Today, they offer a diverse selection of new and used rock, jazz, indie, hip-hop, punk, hardcore, metal, blues, soundtrack, and reggae LPs, as well as T-shirts, posters, and other merchandise. They buy used record collections and music memorabilia and will pay you top dollar for them. House calls made for large collections in the tri-state area. Call or email generationrecords at gmail.com and follow them on Facebook or Instagram. Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, located in Lakewood, Colorado, is the Rocky Mountain headquarters for all things punk, hardcore, and metal. Established in 2014, they have the largest selection of records, CDs, shirts, stickers, patches, and accessories between Chicago and Los Angeles. From the pit to the ditch, they got your back. Get in touch with Josh and the rest of them at www.chainreactionrecords.com. Uh, that said, uh, you know what? Here's a show that I wanna mention. We just announced this the other day. Hey, 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 it was announced the other day. What do you say? Mr. Vic Venom is coming on the show. Punk legend. And I don't use that. I don't use that term loosely. Vic Venom coming on the show. This guy has an incredible, incredible resume. Nausea, Sacrilege, Chaos UK, Reagan Youth, Hellbent, Coffin Daggers, and lately, DIY and Breed. So this is Sunday, August 29th, Vic Venom. What you know about that? All right? We're still doing it over here at the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, you know? Yep. 
There you go. Is that right? Uh, shout out Sunday. Shout out the Yankees for blowing another game at Boston. Ridiculous. Okay. All right. Let's do this. Let's take some questions for our guest. Any kind of questions, music questions, car questions. Maybe you need some advice in your love life. Feel free. Let's ask Rob Dukes these questions. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. I don't, I don't know what happened. We, you know, we're having these crazy monsoon storms here. I don't know what happened. It just fucking cut off. Honestly, bro, we take it all in stride here. Yeah, it's good, man. Good. We, we look good. forward to disasters at this point with this show. Seriously, it's like, okay, cool. Like, whatever. You know? Yeah. Let me... What was that? I wanted to... That picture that I put up before with you in front of the aircraft carrier. Um, yeah. I like that shot. Wait, let me find it again. Um, yeah. We played really? on it. That was a, we did a show on that in Oakland. Oh, is that right? Yeah, and we played on an aircraft carrier. Is that San so, Diego? No, it was uh, Oakland, California. Oh, Oakland. Here it is. I got yeah. it. Yeah. Got a comment on the. You got a comment on the death. Someone commented on the Death Angel shirt. That got. That. They opened up for us. That's why I was wearing it. Ah. I is that what that is? The, yeah. Kantos says, Hornet. is that the USS Hornet? Is that yeah, right? Yes, it, yes, it was, man. Yeah. Kantos knows. He's an Oakland yeah. guy. Yeah, he is an <laughs> Oakland guy, man. Yeah. What's that stick he's been smoking? Oh, uh, the Monte Cristo, uh, Havana. Yeah. 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 I'm sitting at the yard bar in Chandler, Arizona. It's the one of the it's this little, cool little cigar bar. Um, it's called the yard. It's... Uh, I'm, it's like I love this place, man. It's like a home away from home. And uh, oh, I, thought, I thought you were home the whole time. No, man, I'm gonna sit at a bar all the time. <laughs> yeah, I came here early in the morning, smoke cigars, drink coffee. Yeah, it's, there, it's Sunday, man. Go. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Um, okay, here's it. I'll try to translate this to the best of my abilities. Hey, Rob, thanks for the mention. Reference Belfast, a great memory. We talked about bikes that day, and I always wondered, did you keep that lovely Honda RC51? Also, big shout-out to Tom Hunting going through a tough time. Yeah, uh, yeah Tom Hunting, uh, he went through chemo and had surgery last week for uh, to remove uh, stomach cancer. They removed Oof. it successfully, and he's uh, got a couple more treatments. I'm actually uh, going up there uh, next week to hang out with him, have dinner, and, and uh, just you know shoot the shit. And uh, Yeah, Tom's a beautiful human being, and uh, I hope he, hopefully he's going to be fine, man. You know, he's a good, good fighting spirit. He's in good spirits when I talk to them and, uh, you know, so, uh, yeah. Man. And, uh, great guy to tour with one of my closest friends in the world. And he's the reason I was in Exodus, man. He was my biggest fan. Um, he convinced Gary that, yeah, this guy can do it. You know what I mean? And, and him and Rick were, were really, uh, between the three of them and, and Jack too. But, but Tom was, was always a big fan of, of me personally uh, as a singer and as a performer. Um, the RC-51, I actually sold that RC-51 because it uh, it kept, uh, the, the, the electrical system kept, uh, I had to replace the entire electrical system. So at some point I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna get another one. So I ended up buying an FJR 1300 right now, which is uh, a sport tour, real fast, comfortable. I do real long distance rides on it. I rode from here to San Francisco and back on it. A couple of days and uh, had a blast. I always go up to like Grand Canyon and and Monument Valley and Mount Zion and and do like the the Southwest on that bike a lot. I go to Bisbee all the time, hang out with Doug Sanhope, and then um, and uh, I, I eventually want to get another RC, but I just uh, right now I'm trying to finish my vet, and then um, I'm gonna try and uh, purchase a. Uh, I'm looking for like a mid 2000s. Corvette, like a Zio, like a 2006, 2009. One of those. That's kind of like in the works right now, what I'm trying to, trying to do. Right on. Wanna... Here's one from uh, our resident historian, Chucky Brown, uh, the singer for Crazy Eddie. On the Exodus album, Exhibit B, The Human Condition, did he and Lee Altus from Exodus and Heathen write the ballad of Leonard and Charles? Is a song? Is that a song about the serial killer killers, Leonard Lake Hill and Charles... Nig, Nig, Ing, 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 uh, Ing, Ing. Excuse yeah. me. Um, yeah. I wrote the lyrics. Lee wrote the music. That's how that song. Went. I see. Uh, okay. Well, I wrote the lyrics. I read a book on them, and then I wrote the lyrics based on that. And and uh, 
You know, it was funny. Was you know, the 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 Exodus world was uh, you know ten years and no ballads, and I was like, well, we should write a ballad then. So it was funny that I put that title. Gary had a good laugh on it. it was a good you know, Gary's a good uh, he's a good guy for playing on words and stuff. So um, that's why we called the ballad because it's the only ballad that uh, they've ever done. And uh, yeah, so I wrote the lyrics for that one. Yeah, cool. Um, Exodus Thomas Starkey asks. Exodus had a big makeover when Rob joined. Three new members, including Paul Bostoff. What was that like? Fucking crazy. So I joined Exodus. Rick and Tom and Gary and Jack are the band and me, right? And then Tom had to leave for medical reasons uh, at the time, and Rick uh, needed to get sober, so he left. And it was fucking crazy. So now we have fucking no band, so I go back to L.A., and I'm like, call me when you're ready, you know what I mean? And, and uh so uh, they started recording, and then Bo Staff uh, was in Slayer and had quit uh, Slayer and then joined us, and we toured with him for like uh, a year and a half. And then Tom came back, and uh, Paul joined Testament. And, um, and then uh, uh, Lee joined the band when I joined the band. So me and Lee joined together around the same time. And, uh, you know, being a big hockey guy, me and Lee became like, you know, we just we loved hockey, so that's all we did was talk hockey. <laughs> Plus, you know, he's a shitbag Flyers fan, so fuck him. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ranger fan, Flyers fan. Yeah, that, that's a bit much, huh? Yeah, man. It, it, we had so we watched games. We laughed so hard. I mean, we we uh, you know, he's he's like a brother. You know, he's one of my best friends. But yeah, our friend Denise LeBeau says, as you've worked with everyone who is cool as fuck, do you have a dream collaboration? Could be any artist in any time. I guess it's fantasy time. Like you know. Uh, Rob Halford or Robbie Halford or Freddie Mercury, either one, either one would be fucking. And those Freddie Mercury is my favorite singer of all time. Rob Halford is my favorite singer alive. Um, I think Mike Hatton would be really, really awesome to work with. Um, uh, I, you know, there's so fucking many, dude. Like fuck, man. I mean, uh, uh, John Garcia from Caius. Yeah, that's um, a good one. Um, just a little shout out, uh, John Joseph. Did sing with me on the new Generation Kill record. We did a song together, and uh, so that was a that was a bucket list. Whoop, did that one, you know? Me and John. Are, That's cool. Me and John, me and John were friends a while, and I just called him up and I was like, "Hey, John, man, will you sing the song?" And he was like, ah, "I don't know, man, like, cause he gets uh, so many people ask him all the time." And then I sent them the song, and then he was like, "Oh, fuck yeah, I'll do it right now." And then a week later, he was in the studio doing it, and the song That's cool. is fucking killer, man. He fucking killed it, so. Yeah. Right on. Here's a good one um, from RS70, who uh, created that New York hardcore logo on the top right. What was his first car? 1966 Volkswagen Beetle. Wow. Yeah, so that, so that's I, where your so that's kind of where your love from Beetle from Volkswagen comes from. Yeah, and plus you know I mean they're not a hard car to work on, but they're very particular and they're very they're very. They're very particular, and once you know the little ins and outs of Volkswagen, so I, I had one. I totally restored it, lowered it, old school style, no shocks at the front, um, chain steering wheel, like eight inch chain steering wheel, like Cheech and Chong. I had a big, <laughs> the big, little chain I, steering wheel. I, I, yeah. I, 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 I cut my fenders and remolded them and put 60s on it, and uh, you know, um, put dual carbs on it, and just uh, customized the entire interior. And I had like big, I had a kicker in the back and killer stereo man so I, I just uh you know it was a cool little car i went from that to uh, a, a 70 le mans ss um mm -hmm. and i became uh then i got into muscle cars a lot i always had a volkswagen but i started doing i had a couple chevelles i had a gto i had uh, a bunch of cars man are you um, a fan of is rob a fan of the new vws no, no. <laughs> uh no no, no, not a fan. Uh, I mean, honestly, the, to be honest, I don't know anything about them. I, I don't. I drive old. I drive old hot rods. I don't. I don't. I got yeah. a. I drive a. So I got a Chevy Blazer for drive back and forth to work that I don't give a fuck about. I mean, I just drive it. I change the oil. I change. I rotate the tires, and that's. It's a dog. It. It's yeah, a it's dog, a, right? It, it, yeah, it's a six cylinder. It's yeah, it's a, you know, it's a whatever. I don't. I spill coffee in it. I don't even clean it up. I don't give a fuck. It's my work car. Um, but yep. all my, my, all my other cars are, are like, I, you know, they're restorations. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Chucky Brown says in the, 
on the Exodus album, in the Exodus album, Shovelhead Kill Machine, I believe the Japan edition had a bonus cover track from the Sex Pistols, Problems. Whose <laughs> idea was it to cover that song? <laughs> that was fucking my, my idea. Hey, there you go, bro. That was my idea. That was my homage to the Sex Pistols. Uh, you know, yeah, because, you know, those guys were all metalheads. And I was like, nah, let's do something fucked up and weird. And, <laughs> uh, you know, Pro Problems was my favorite song on that record. Only because when the song ended, he kept saying problems. 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 Just, for, when I was a kid, that one fucking hit me like a ton of bricks. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, fucking, that's so yeah. awesome. So that, that was my idea. Yeah. What's Rap Bone? You hear the new Iron Maiden Rap Bones wants to know? Have you heard no, the I new have, Iron Maiden? It's fucking killer. I have not yet, man. I, I plan on it. But so the way I listen to music is I want to hear the whole album. I'm the type of guy that I still buy the album uh, legally. Um, because I'm a musician, so I understand the whole rapper. But I usually like to put on my headphones, turn off the lights, and uh, just listen to the album in its entirety. And that's how I uh, that's how I listen to music all the time. I just I listen to uh, like uh, you know I just listen to the whole thing because sure. I know how I know how I operate. Yeah. Um, I the album is 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 a, an entire entity. Like it starts and it ends. And then it has a ride that it takes you on, and that's kind of yep. what. Uh, so that's what I do. And then usually after I listen to it, I, I just take it in. I listen to it a couple times, and then I'll I'll get out the lyrics and I'll read the lyrics along with it. And I'm still that guy that you know fucking loves lyrics, man. I, I know not everybody's into that, but I. I, I uh, Here's an interesting one, and 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 I, and I know uh, just you know from us talking and, and about stuff, but let, let's let this fly. Does does he have any ill feelings towards Zet, uh, Zetro after being replaced by him in Exodus? Uh, I did for a while. I was pretty bitter for about a year, to be honest. Uh, I was pretty angry because um, you know, was my at that point it was my career, you know what I mean. So it ended, and I I didn't um, uh, you know I didn't kind of I mean in retrospect. It all happened for the right reasons. It, they they went about it in a fucked up way, but you know, it was business, and business is business. And you know, it's yeah. kind of like a hockey team. Like I love hockey players, but they get traded sometimes, and you, you yeah. there's a business reason. And at the time, Exodus was going to make more money with Zetro singing for the nostalgia feeling rather than than having me in the band. And and um, so I was angry about it for about a year. Um, and then, but I, you know, what was funny was after I got through it and I kind of went through the, all the, the emotions of it, cause it's like a, it's like in a divorce, man. And like the yeah, five yeah. people who you're really close yeah. friends with. I, I lived on a tour bus with these guys for 10 years. And, um, you know, so after a while I got over my anger and my bitterness and I, uh, we, uh spoke with, uh, Gary gave me a call one day and, uh, we settled on the phone and then I flew up and I did a show with them. And uh, at the chapel in San Francisco, and we settled all our shit, man. And, and uh, we were all very honest. We sat down, we had dinner, we talked about it. And as far as Zetro, I had never really knew Zetro. I mean, I didn't really know him. He never came around when I was in the band once or twice. But I actually went and did a podcast with him. Uh, it's on YouTube, and uh, we yeah. spent about five hours together. It was fucking great. I and saw, I, I saw some of it. I mean, I, and that's why, that's why I felt. It, it, yeah, I'm not, you know, we, we don't, we don't ambush people on the show, but I saw that you were on his podcast and, and I yeah. saw that Gary, Gary plays on your new shit. So hey, it, it, it all must album. be, it all must be cool these days, you know? Yeah. Gary did a solo on the song, Never Relent. If people want to yep. go out and hear a fucking really good thrash song, uh, Gary did the solo on it. And what's funny, it was the same thing as John. I go, Gary, do a solo. And he's like, ah, he was in Slayer at the time. I'm like, you yeah, know, I don't know, man. And then I sent the song. He goes, "Oh, okay, yeah, I'm in. I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah." So you know, the music stands up for itself, which is, you know, yeah, which is def that's the respect that I have, and I, I, I'm glad for that. You know what I mean? That I did, uh, you know, um, I did uh, the, the music I'm doing now. You know, hopefully uh, people dig it, and um, we can go out and play live shows. That's the goal. I'm actually playing. I don't. I'm playing in New York on September 25th. Is that right? I don't, I don't know where though. <laughs> I forget the name of the club. It's I, I, I'm well, we, all we got to do is ask people. Hey, where's yeah. uh, where's Rob <laughs> playing in September? You guys put it in the chat room. Yeah, no. I don't I don't know where I'm playing, but if you, uh, as many people, if you guys want to come out, man, we're gonna do 
a bunch of new shit, some old shit, some cool covers that we're not telling anybody we're doing. Gonna surprise. And this, and this is Generation all. Kill. Generation Kill. Man. Yeah. 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 So. Okay. <laughs> Uh, our, our good friend Walter Monster Ryan says, "Hey Rob, what were you and Mark Oseguida? How do you pronounce that? Oseguida mm -hmm. from good, Death yeah. Angel, from Death yeah. Angel up to when I saw you guys at my Sub Zero show in Irving Plaza back around 2005. That was so random. Great seeing you. What's up, Drew? So I love Sub Zero. I love Lou, man. Lou is one of my favorite people. A uh, great story about Lou." I'm how do you know Lou? How, you know, I used to manage okay. Sub Zero. How do you? Okay. What's the you and Lou debate? What? So, so check this out. So I go see Sub Zero, and then I think I, I think they were opening for the Chromags. I think I was there to see the Chromags, and Sub Zero was. Ah. I saw the both. All right. So right. I was hanging out with uh with Mark, my friend Sip Cipriano, uh, who owns uh the Q Bar in San Francisco. Yes, of course. Yep. And uh and uh, and and we all hung out that night, and so. And me and Lou became friends because Sub Zero went on tour with Exodus in 2004, right? Uh, 2005, 2005. Right. And uh, and uh, Walter was drumming, right? And um, so uh, they had to get off the tour. Their their band kept breaking down, so they bailed on tour. It was uh, full blown chaos. Sub Zero and Exodus. Wow. All that for a fucking tour. Imagine that tour going down. That's right. Fucking killer, yep. right? So me and Lou become friends because Lou is a big Cure fan. I'm a huge Cure fan. <laughs> so we go on this, we go on this deep dive about like, oh fucking Robert Smith, uh, you know, Radiohead, but and we're like, oh dude, we're, if people really knew what we were listening to, they'd be so mad. That's and funny. Uh, so, so Lou, one day, so I, I'm in New York off tour, like like in 2008 or 2009, and I was I got on my motorcycle and I was riding. I just went for a ride. I went, I got, I went to like Connecticut and I rode up to Vermont and I came back and I was stopped in Terry, Terrytown at this little fucking bar just to get a sandwich and something to drink on a, on a I had just ridden my motorcycle for like six hours and sure. sitting at the bar is fucking Lou sitting at the bar is he's sitting there and he's having a, a, a sandwich and we fucking died. So we started laughing that we ran into each other randomly. In, in Terrytown, New York, and uh, that's great. Yeah, and I think Walter's playing with DRI now. Is that correct? He was. I don't know if he still is. We got to. Are you still playing with DRI, Walter? <laughs> um, here, yeah, I had to pull this fun, this photo. Here's a shot of me and Lou DiBella from 1997 when I was managing the band. We were on tour in Europe with the Misfits. There he is. And, 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 as you can see, my it, this is us on tour in '97. <laughs> me and Lou. I, I got, oh, I got, awesome. I got like what's around my head is like a lo a sleeve from like some misfits, you know, long sleeve. I cut it off and was using it as a, band. As a sweatband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. We should do, we should do it with sweatband. We take the sleeve, cut off, yeah, yeah. put on there the sweatband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. So there's Fuck me and Lou, uh, fucking yeah, love Lou, man. He's, he, he's, Lou's he's, great. Walter's great, man. Walter was. We had someone last on a tour, man. Yeah, what a good that was. That okay, was well, yeah, good. okay. No, he's not. He, he no, he's back in powerhouse. Chris Contos, this is the drummers collective here. Chris Contos oh, yeah, yeah. says he's back in powerhouse. Okay, all right, cool. And then right. uh, Rampy is back in uh, Rampy's back in DRI. Mm. Um, all right. So, but wait, I got. Okay, he, here's the word here. Uh, you, by the way, you're playing Debonair Music Hall. Oh, that's uh, right, Debonair Music Hall. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> used to be, used to be Mexicali Blues, if I remember correctly, in lovely Teaneck, New Jersey. Yeah, and, Teaneck, uh, New Jersey. That's it. Yeah, yeah I'll yeah, be yeah, there, yeah. man. I'll, I'll come out right. to that. Yeah, good, man. Good. You bring, uh, bring, um, uh, Michael with you. I will. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. It, you know. Yep. Um, Rob, uh, you know what? Where, where's Stephen Messina? Stephen, you gonna come back on the show? Where are you, man? Um, song, Rob, what, what's your what's your favorite Judas Priest to sing? I can't sing any of them, man. Fuck, man, that guy is fucking god. You know what I mean? But if I could, if I was a good singer, I would sing either Dreamer Deceiver, which I could never pull off. But uh, you know, a Victim of Changes is pretty badass. Um, Tyrant, I, I I might be able to pull off Tyrant if I didn't have to do the highs. If I could just scream the highs, but. Um, you know, they're so fucking made. Uh, delivering the goods, delivering the goods. I did, I did do a cover of um, at a show once. We did the, uh, we were doing the the metal show. we were doing a Christmas party, and they, we were the band, and we played um, uh, Electric Eye, and uh, it, actually I pulled it off, man. It was actually not bad. <laughs> it was not bad. 
Yeah. There you go. Um, let me see. Oh yeah, Michael Lago. That we were all out on that Sub Zero Misfits tour. That's when I really yeah. connect. That's when I really got to know um, Michael Lago. It was on the yeah. tour because he signed. He signed the Misfits to Geffen on that comeback record with Michael Graves. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here you go. Uh, um, shouting out, uh, shouting out, Walter Monster Ryan playing upstate New York in Powerhouse with Madball, January thirtieth in Albany. January thirtieth. January 30th. Shit's being booked. Shit's being booked that far out. Dude, Damn. we're booking. We're booking next August. Next August. Not even Good this Lord. August. The next one. <laughs> God. Damn. Yeah, dude. Well, you can, uh, Walter, if you come to Arizona, I'll come see you, man. All right, here's a question that's been brought up a couple times. Hey, Rob, how often do you get asked about the epic Wall of Death video on YouTube, Exodus 2010 Wacken? It was 2008, and I get at least once a week. <laughs> once a week. At least once a week. Yeah. I think that ended the Wall of Death being able to be done in Europe. I think it was, yeah. Uh, I know that we played uh, the following year, we played in uh, England, and they asked me not to do it. Like, can you not do it? And I'm like, I'll try, but I did it anyway. So. Right. <laughs> people, 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 want, people want it, man. People, people need it. Yeah, man. Well, hey, man. Sinner, oh, Sinner would be a good song. Yes. Fuck sinner, yeah. sinner, Sinner, oh, Sinner, Sinner, Sinner. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, uh, I want to thank you a million for coming on the show. Um, we had – a good time. We had some laughs, and that is the true yeah. currency in this life that we lead, man. Yes, it is, man. So, yes, it is. anybody you want to shout out on the way out? Ah, uh, the Yard Cigar Bar in Chandler, Arizona. It's my my hangout. Anybody living in, in Arizona want to come out and hang out? I'm here most a lot of the time. Um, uh, Black Fly sunglasses. They're awesome. Selling selling art uh, clothing. They they always uh, I, I rock their shit. They send me a lot of stuff and. And I'm a real fan of their company. Um, good people running it. Good people designing their stuff, and uh, really good to the tattoo community and good to to the to the rock community. And um, and that's been all my friends, man. All you guys that have, if you're watching, and I, I met you along the way, man. And um, I'm stoked that you're a fan. And look, it's hard being in a band now because the music is fucking. It is what it is. The COVID didn't fucking help. So if you guys can go, uh, you know at least uh, subscribe on YouTube, the generation kill page, and then maybe go on Facebook or Instagram and give us some shit and, and uh, just give us some love. And, and we got two new videos out, uh, never relent and rat King came out in the last two months. And then we have one more video coming out next month. And then the album drops in September. If you guys can buy it, we are going to have if you go to our website, generation kill band. Um, we'll have vinyl. We're going to have seven inches. We're going to have t-shirts and all the cool shit. So, you know, it's, you know, I drink coffee all the time and I know that <laughs> the, the, the coffee that I purchase is if I drink two cups of coffee a day, that's an album. And I still purchase uh, bands music. Uh, I still do it all the time. I, uh, you know, I buy vinyl, I buy CDs, I buy their shit so from them personally. Uh, I'm a huge Buckethead fan, so I, I definitely uh, buy all his stuff and I I buy bands that I love, man. I, if I love it, I, I buy it and I, I honor it too. And I don't, I don't steal music. And it just, it, you know, it's hard to make a living being a musician. That's why I'm a mechanic and a couple days a week. Um, and then, hey, I uh, got, I, you, you know, know what? While you're here, uh, first l let's do this. Uh, from our, from our big, big fan of yours, who was so excited you were coming on, our man Heggs, part of the A7 Rampage Mosh Crew. Exodus stage collapse in Lakeland, Florida. What? What's yeah, man. So, so I was actually a fan back then. I was at that show, man. So the stage, um, that was a show where uh, where I, um, <laughs> me and my friends were drunk as shit. And when Exodus came on, they they played. Uh, they were on the. Uh, I think it was a fabulous. It was Celtic Frost, Exodus, and Anthrax. And when they played Bonded. And the whole fucking place just fucking <laughs> went forward, and the and the barrier collapsed. And one of the security guards got his leg in a compound fracture, and they dragged him off the stage. And Exodus, the cops came on and made Exodus leave the stage. And that was when Scott Ian came out and said, "Hey, everyone, calm down." And it was a wave of bottles and shit just getting thrown <laughs> at the cops. 
Then a riot broke out. They burned a police car. They were flipping cars in a parking lot. It was like this fucking mayhem, crazy fucking tour. It was a crazy show. And uh, yeah, man, it was fucking, it was, it was incredible. And that was, yeah, that was when I saw Exodus and that show. I was there. And it was a fucking crazy show. All right, so. that, that's, a, that's a good note to end on, isn't it? Yes, it is, man. Yeah, it is, man. Right on. Hey, we'll, we'll see you soon. And uh, when you come to town, I'll come out with a Lago. I wish you all the best in your endeavors, my friend. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you having me on. I appreciate everything and, uh, and uh, all your support along the way. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in September when you come out to the show. Absolutely. Talk to you soon. All right, bud. Peace. Well, there you go. That was a great show. And that's what we do here with your support. We do great shows. Thank you, everybody in the chat. Shout out to Collapses. Let's do some shout outs real quick. It's Sunday shout out day. Let's do some some quick, quick shout. So, uh, shout out to Collapses. Um, what else? Um, that said, um, yeah, it was a great, great show. Alago says, I love you, Rob. Absolutely. So, uh, Alago, we got to go out. We got to go see them when they play. I'll, I'll drive. Uh, thank you, Brian. I'm glad to see you came back. You were gone for a while. You know, you you hurt hurt my feelings. You know, hey, where where you been? Uh, the signal was going in and out. I had to run upstairs. You got something for Rob? No, I was just gonna say thank you. Just uh, all right. You know, everything was great. You know, I was really enjoying the stories and uh, that, that picture of you and uh, you your friend. That was uh, those are awesome pictures you sent. Yeah, that was a really something. He um. You got you got to remember to send those to Rob. Oh, I'm going to, and I have a couple of more too, because he was one of those guys that was always there. And uh, you know, sadly, the first time I got to talk to Rob was at his wake. So, and uh, just a really I remember, now that I see the pictures, I remember him. Oh yeah, no, yeah. he he was unmistakable. He was uh he was in like I would see him with Phil Anselmo. He was just a really super guy. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, Great, you know, Rob. Rob was great. I really, uh, I really enjoyed it, and uh, I loved all the. You know, he, 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 he was uh, pretty diverse in regards to the cars and the crab. Now, did he? Yeah. Um, did he do anything with Roger in regards to cars? Because I think they both. Uh... I don't know. Let's. Uh, she, she, you know what? And he's back. <laughs> there he is. Hey, I don't hear. We don't hear you. Volume. Don't hear him. I think he muted himself. It, he's got the mute, the mute oh, that, button. Yeah. There now he is. I, there he is. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, Roger was the first person I, when I moved here, I called when I, uh, when Exit fired me. And I called Roger. I'm like, dude, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do, man. Fuck. And he was like, well, I got this. I know my buddy has a Volkswagen shop. So, <laughs> Roger helped me get my gig at the Volkswagen shop. So, uh, and uh, I, we've done a bunch of car shows together. I go to, the, he's in the Rumblers, and I was in uh, yeah. the Low Lowlifes, and uh, and he. I used to go to all the I go to all the Rumbler shows. I I hung out with Roger multiple times. Uh, we go to shows together. We went and saw Old Plum Casuals, and we uh, saw. I think we saw the Dwarves uh, and the Queers who were here, and I think we went to that show. And and uh, so yeah, Roger's awesome, man. Roger's a good dude, man. I see I see him often. So. Yeah, and and uh, Roger's in Scottsdale. My mom is in Scottsdale. You know. Um, Larry yeah. Brooklyn, Larry, who manages Sick of It All, is in Scott. You know, there's some action there in Scottsdale, right? I think, and and yeah, Elson, yeah. Elson was in Scottsdale, right? I think Dave was in yeah, Scottsdale. He does. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. That's a that's a weird thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a story. <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> yeah, man. You know. It's, it's oh, yeah. oh yeah, right, right, and and also right, the flaps I know things and the jets. I want to know. The Flotsam and Jetson guys and, and Sacred yeah, Rock, actually, right? Oh, 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 shout out. Yeah. So shout out to, to Mike Gilbert from Flotsam because I record all the Generation Kill vocals at his house in his studio. Because um, uh, I don't fly back to New York to do all of them. I do some of them there, but I do most of them here. He did all the Fragile Mortal stuff. He did all the Generation Kill stuff on the new record. Oh, I right on. So, and Mike, Mike is awesome. Mike's such a good dude. He comes and hangs out here at the, at the bar with me once in a while. As I got him to smoke a cigar one night. And uh, yeah, man, and I, I see uh, the guy, the sacred guys. I see them now. Um, you sure. Know, so uh, yeah. The new anyway. record is great. The just the one that just came out is really good. Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 I, right. I like those guys a lot. 
All right, you guys. All well, right. thanks again, Stephen. Uh, Rob, I'll talk to you guys soon. Rob, it was a pleasure. Uh, all right, man. Well, once again, this was the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, and we are sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, The Texas Silver Rust Chain, Reaction Records and Skateboards, DTFM Vinyl Distro, Chacho's Tacos, and Generation Records. Thanks a lot, everybody. Hey, there's the PayPal address. Who, who, who was that? Wait, what did I see? Um... Where did I see that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that is that right, Dylan's your fan one? Are you going to become a patron? Come on, man. Jump in the pool, bro. There it is. There's the address. Become a patron. Support the show. Cool stuff on Patreon. You know, this is a great community. Rob Ewells, what's up? Can't wait to see Generation Kill in Teaneck. <laughs> I've been to that place. Right in suburban Teaneck. So there you go. You know, um, that's that. Until then, hey, listen, everybody, thanks a lot. Good show. We will see you on Wednesday with Dave Scott Schwartzman from Adrenaline OD. Until then, do good things, and good things will come to you. Yeah.